Uh, <clears throat> thank you for coming tonight. We are uh, live streaming this uh, to a lot of people out there. And uh, we want this message to go out far and wide. Uh, so tonight is, is very important. Now, any of you that have heard the shadow government speech uh, before, this is that speech on steroids. So uh, I think we'll, we'll have some eye-opening stuff here that I think a lot of people are going to see. And God willing, we'll, we'll be able to make a change. Uh, I always like to say uh, I call myself a recovering CIA officer. Um, I go through uh, uh, CIA Officers Anonymous, uh, but, but that group is not a 12-step program. It's a 24-step program. Uh, the first 12 steps, we learn how to tell the truth again, and that's the hardest part. Uh, I also like to say that, that uh, when you're a CIA whistleblower, there are some perks to that, believe it or not. Uh, for example, uh, I get my mail is open before I get it. It's kind of nice. It's like, well, thank you for that. Uh, somebody's already been, been in it. Uh, my cell phone turns itself on and off, uh, especially when I have these meetings. My wife will tell you the cell phone will just come on right before we come and do this sort of thing. Well, that's convenient, though. That you, could, you could look at that maybe as a perk, couldn't you? Um, we, uh, if I ever get lost, we travel a lot. And if, if I ever get lost, uh, there's always someone following me. <laughs> so I, I can go back and ask directions, you know, which is, that's pretty cool. So, uh, you know, there are some perks for doing this, and, um, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it to anyone else, I'll tell you that much. Um, so it's been pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, this, uh, I'd like to start out a little lighthearted because this is a, a very, very uh, heavy topic. As my friend who introduced me and I talked about earlier, we're not just at the 11th hour, we're at the 11th hour 59 minute point in this country constitutionally. I'm sorry to say that we, we are living under a post-constitutional government in America now, and it's getting worse by the hour. There's a war going on in Washington. I'll talk about some of that tonight. Uh, some of this information is the first that we've ever presented. Uh, and as some of you know, I take a bit of a risk in doing this. Um, every time I do it, and we've been living this for about four years, but uh, it has to be done because this is so important what we're up against uh, in, in this country. Uh, I consider myself really duty bound. Um, I touched on, yeah, you, thank you. Honey, I am so afraid you're going to fall. <laughs> yeah, thank, and, and you are now famous, thank you. <clears throat> um, thank you, I appreciate it. You know, I was kind of watching that, thank you. I owe you some kind of safety award or, <clears throat> there'll be a, a, brown, a brown bag wrapped up in the back for you later on, no, I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I touched on this in California. If any, did anybody out there see the California speech that I gave, uh, I think it was this past July? Uh, that speech, I think, to date has hit uh, two million views, I think, already on, on uh, YouTube. And it's, it's gone viral. And that is just a fragment of what we're going to talk about tonight. Now, I'm going to get into quite a bit of detail. Uh, and we're going to go the full span. So feel free, if you, have, if you have to get up and move or something, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we're live streaming this to a lot of people out there. And, the primary purpose of tonight is to do that because we want to get this message out to as many people as we can. So thanks for coming. Um, <clears throat> I give this speech to uh, any group that will take the risk to do it. Uh, some do and some don't. Um, the uh, mainstream media has avoided this and I, I will explain why that is later on. You'll see why that is. There are a lot of sectors that, that don't want this information becoming public. Um, I talked to GOP groups, constitutional groups, libertarian groups, uh, Tea Party groups, and I have to tell you, I meet some of the most wonderful people you could meet at these meetings. Just, just freedom-loving, um, good Americans uh, you meet coming to these, to these speeches, and it's really fulfilling for me. It's the best of the best. Um, I was asked, uh, I have a good friend, Dane Wigington, out on the West Coast. Uh, the first speech, uh, anybody took the risk uh, to let me get up and talk about this was Dane out in California. He's the pres president of Geo geoengineeringwatch.org. Uh, he is probably one of the most professional uh, people I've ever worked with. Now, I am no expert on geoengineering by any stretch. That's Dane's uh, area of expertise. Uh, he asked me to come and talk about my expertise, and that is uh, government cover-up, the shadow government, and how they silence whistleblowers. So that's, that's what I do. Um, he doesn't talk about chemtrails. Uh, 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 Dane, just in, uh, in his... Uh, credit talks about geoengineering. Now the, the interesting part of that is that one of the reasons I went out to talk to Dane and his group was the director of the CIA, John Brennan, went before the Council on Foreign Relations. Anybody know what that is? We'll talk about that tonight and you, some of that is will curl people's hair. 
The director of the CIA, John Brennan, went before the Council of Foreign Relations last year and said that he has gained a personal interest in geoengineering and specifically uh, strategic aerosol injection. That the CIA and the Council of Foreign Relations are interested in geoengineering. Now, I can tell you, as a former CIA officer, if they come out, the CIA comes out and says anything publicly like that before the Council of Foreign Relations, which created the CIA, you need to take note of that. Because if they're saying it publicly, my experience being in there is they're already doing it. Or they've been planning on doing it for some time. So you, you can actually go on CIA.gov and you can see John Brennan give that presentation before the Council on Foreign Relations. So maybe Dane's on to something. But I want to give him credit because he's the first person that, that had the, 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 the guts to let me come out and talk about some of this stuff in public. So kudos to him. Uh, all right. I also like to like to say uh, I am not a Democrat, nor am I a Republican. I'm a I'm a constitutionalist. I'm, I'm an independent. For me, uh, it's all about the Constitution based on where I come from. And I've seen some of the, the worst of the worst. Um, I, this is not a, a conservative or liberal talk at all. It's completely nonpartisan. What I'm trying to do is bring people together under the United States Constitution because what they want to do is they want to divide us and split us apart. And if they can do that, especially globally, they can eliminate what America is and the unity that we have. And you can see that with all the unrest and all the racial stuff and all the protests. A lot of that is coming down from some of the globalist financiers that are financing some of these groups with the intent of dividing America. So I want everybody to understand that. Don't fall into that trap because they're trying to split us up. And it comes from a, a global level. Uh, I'm doing this because uh, I adore this country and our constitutional government and our constitutional republic. That's what drives me and that's what motivates me. Um, I risked my life for this country literally when I was in the CIA. And, and I'm seeing this country being degraded and taken apart. Uh, sadly, the CIA is a part of that. And we'll be talking about that. Um, I risked my, my life, I swore an oath to defend the Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic. Sadly, one of our biggest enemies to our, our freedoms happens to be a domestic one. And it's coming from our own government. And uh, that sounds shocking when you first say it. But when we get into some detail here and we actually prove it, uh, you'll find out that it is indeed the truth. That from the inside out is, uh, is where the attack is coming from, the really serious one. Uh, there are certain dark parts of our own government I call personally the shadow government. That's what we'll be talking about. Some call it the deep state, and the deep state does exist. Uh, what my point is coming from the CIA is the deep state and the shadow government are not the same thing. They're used interchangeably, but the shadow government and the deep state are not the same entity. They are joined together in a matrix, but they are not one and the same. And I'll explain how that is and why that is. And it's important to know that. They're both a threat to... Uh, to our Constitution. Uh, I come from the belly of the beast, the deep secret inner workings of the government that no one sees on the outside, the massive system of secrecy and the matrix of secret intelligence agencies that are now manipulating our elected officials behind the scenes. There's a serious threat to our democracy and our constitutional republic by the shadow government and its, its associated deep state. In a few years, we may no longer have a constitutional republic. Some people think that we, we already don't, do not have a constitutional republic. And I, sadly, personally happen to be one of those. That the Constitution is, is over, except for those of us that still adhere to it as the supreme law of the land. Uh, the government has superseded that in, in a gross fashion. And we're going to talk about that uh, in detail this evening. If you could please uh, hold your questions till the end and I will be available at the back table when we are done uh, and uh, I'll, I'll answer any questions that I can. I've met some of you personally that I've been talking with online and some, some folks from previous uh, speeches so it's so good to have you here um, and we're live streaming to a lot, a lot of folks so welcome to everyone that's watching this tonight. We hope that uh, will cause a bang. So, all right, uh, I'm going to focus on the shadow government. The unconstitutional power of government secrecy. I call it the tyranny of secrecy. Our government has such a powerful, large matrix system of secrecy that it has literally taken over our elected government in a, in a very complex fashion. They've been doing this for almost 60 years and they've got it perfected. I always like to start my talks with this because it is so important. The Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the land. It's not 
a document of philosophy. It's not a, a written piece of ideology that's just a nice way for a country to do business or, or a, an ideology to follow. The Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the land. It's, it's, it supersedes the entire criminal justice system that we have underneath it. And that's important to understand because if someone violates the Constitution, they are breaking the law. It's a felony, okay? So if the government or any government agency violates the Constitution, like the Fourth Amendment, for example, they're breaking the law. That's a felony. That applies to, to citizens and it applies to the government also. So if we remember that, we understand that, we're going to want to hold some people in Washington accountable for some of the things that are going on there. I mentioned that the shadow government and the deep state are two different entities, although they are joined together in this vast matrix that we see in Washington, D.C. and beyond. The deep state is the secret government, all of the secret intelligence agencies that are functioning in the dark behind the scenes. That is the shadow government, and it binds much of the deep state with secrecy, secret oaths, secrecy agreements, and other things that bind a lot of large contractors and others from saying anything about what they see. The deep state, however, is the system, and you can see I put a dollar sign on system. The deep state is a system behind government. The military industrial complex, I'll be talking about that. The currency of the shadow government is the power of secrecy, fear, and intimidation. That's the shadow government. I know because I was a part of that. I was a counterintelligence officer, interviewer, and uh, that's how it works. The currency of the deep state is money, power, and greed. So they're two different things. They're, they're joined together, which I'll explain, but they're two different things that function with, with two different systems of control that are manipulating our government behind the scenes. Let's look at this. I want to show you all the size, the power, and the extent of the shadow government or the secret government. This is the size. Each, each organization that I'm about to show you up here functions in secrecy and is bound by secret oaths from saying anything about what they see. When I was in there, uh, I, was, I was in there during the Iran-Contra scandal and some other things, and you cannot talk about anything that you see, even if it's illegal or, or unconstitutional, because there's a system to sy systematically destroy you if you do. So, you remember the Council on Foreign Relations established in 1921? came largely from the banking elite, the Morgans, the Rothschilds, and others, formed the Council on Foreign Relations. Council on Foreign Relations, uh, eventually, with the same members of the CFR, created the CIA. I think 21 CIA directors have all been members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Uh, that is an unconstitutional organization, and it has been since its founding in 1921. I'll get into that. And, and this is, I'm taking a library of information and research and trying to trying to distill this down and, and to, into as short as I can get it. So there's a lot of stuff here, but we'll, we'll try to keep it simple. Then we, this, the Council on Foreign Relations in the beginning and the CIA had a direct established contract with the mainstream media. Philip and Catherine Graham of the Washington Post were members of the Council on Foreign Relations and directly connected to the CIA and directly connected to the CIA and, and CFR's program of pumping information into the news media for propaganda to the American people. And, uh, do you think that still continues today? No. There's no doubt about it. I will prove it <laughs> later on. Most people will say, ah, that passed away in 1976 with the end of Operation Mockingbird. Operation Mockingbird did not end. A lot of, a lot of you shaking your heads, you know what I'm talking about. It's still here. Mainstream media is involved directly. Then you've got, of course, our beloved NSA. Uh, I know a couple of uh, senior NSA whistleblowers. We tend to be friends when you're doing what we do because it's a small circle of riskies. Um, and they've got a lot of things to say about NSA domestic surveillance and spying. So the NSA was created not through, by Congress, but via executive order outside of the Constitution, which most people don't know. It's got the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or the FISA Court, which is a secret Supreme Court that functions outside of Congress and outside of the American people, and nobody knows what it does except grant warrants to domestically spy on U.S. citizens which it has done in a gross fashion, as most of us know, with the NSA domestic surveillance program. More on that later. Silicon Valley now is, is directly connected to NSA. That's the way that the government does it, the CIA and the NSA. They approach Silicon Valley companies. I was in a military industrial complex. I was a program manager. They are always looking for big multi-million dollar contracts. That's how you survive. That's how you stay alive. So the NSA, the CIA comes to them and says, hey, we got a five, $10 million contract. You sign up, we'll give this to you, and you can hook into Yahoo and Google and everybody else, 
And, uh, you know, it's worth, uh, in this case, about $500 million total. So your average program managers, I'll take it. And they sign up. What the CIA and the NSA do then, because I, I executed thousands of these, they make you sign the piece of paper. Okay, you got this multi-million dollar contract, but you cannot have access to anything until you sign the secrecy oath or the secrecy agreement with the CIA and NSA, which threatens you with administrative action, termination, or prison. If you mention anything connected with that operation, you can go to jail or worse. Um, that's how they do it. Joint Special Operations Command is the president's, people don't know this exists, it's the president's private army. The president of the United States can send the secret JSOC out in any country, and I think they're out there right now, into any country to conduct a special secret operation against that group of people to neutralize or whatever needs to be done in secret. That's the JSOC. The Director of National Intelligence, 17 federal agencies made up of tens of thousands of people are engaged in the shadow or secret government. 17 different intelligence agencies are part of the shadow government. It's massive. I'll show you the size here in a moment. Department of Homeland Security has its own secret branches. Department of State has its own secret branches. You remember when Secretary Hillary Clinton secretly ran guns into Libya, Benghazi, without anybody knowing about it, with, without Congress knowing about it? Those guns were given to the Free Syrian Army in, in uh, Benghazi and eventually up outside of Syria. The Free Syrian Army, claiming to be moderate Islamic rebels, many of them morphed into, guess who? ISIS. ISIS is now using U.S. tanks, U.S. weapons, and trained U.S. fighters. Some of which, they got some of the weapons from Iraq when we bailed out of Iraq. But a lot of ISIS branched out of the Free Syrian Army, and they have a lot of our weapons uh, that they're using that we sent over there. That was conducted in secret. Did anybody here vote for that? Did anybody here vote for arming the Free Syrian Army in Syria with weapons? I don't see any hands. I never do, because we didn't. We didn't even know what was going on. That is the shadow government. Defense Intelligence Agency, another branch of intelligence, were actually caught setting up a program to gain informants inside the United States to have U.S. citizens spy on other U.S. citizens. They were caught by Congress. The program was shut down. They were directly involved in the torture program, which was more than waterboarding, by the way. Uh, people died. It was a lot worse than just pouring water on people's heads. It was pretty bad. Uh, I think they're still under investigation for some of the things that they did to an extreme in, in the torture program. National Reconnaissance Office, all the satellites that are around the Earth, the spy satellites, the technology of which would blow your mind. So I'm just not going there. <laughs> Let's just say that's another branch of the, of the shadow government that, that's up there circulating around. And uh, the technology that is out there, all the way down to nanotechnology, is mind-blowing. The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, most people don't know this, but they approached Google and they assisted with a contract, paying a lot of money to help Google set up Google Earth. So, and we all know what Google Earth can. They can come down and see what kind of tomatoes I'm growing if they want to. So the NGA, do you think that the federal government has a hand in Google Earth and coming down and looking at, at your house and your barn? They helped create it. So is there, is there any individual privacy anymore? It's gone. It, it, it's dead. What they can do uh, is incredible. And it increases by the quarter. National Geospatial Intelligence, the FBI, warrantless search program, where they can break, Robert Mueller authorized this, where they can break into your house without a warrant, search your house, and leave without you ever knowing they were there. Gross violation of the Fourth Amendment. We, I'll try to keep this short, but Robert Mueller testified under oath, uh, fabricated three times. They only broke into Americans' house 47 times. They came back and said, well, sir, we happen to have evidence that it was probably more like 2,000. And now he's under oath. Oh, okay, it was 2,000. Or, sir, we have evidence that it's even more than that. Well, they got them up to 4,000 times that they'd broken into Americans' homes without a warrant. Finally, when they got them above that, they said, uh, Director Mueller, you're not being straight with us. How many times has the FBI broken into Americans' homes? If you can imagine, his response was this. I don't remember. Okay. <clears throat> uh, do we buy that one? I don't think so. Uh, under oath. We'll get into that a little bit later. So, so here we've got the shadow or secret, gov secret government. I will get into the magnitude of this thing, the power of this thing, the unconstitutionality of this thing, uh, and it is mind-blowing. That's just the shadow government. That's not the deep state. This is the deep state. The shadow government is connected to the deep state, and it binds much of it 
through secrecy oaths, secret contracts, and secret agreements that they are bound by life with. For example, Lockheed Martin and other companies have CI contracts. They're bound by the secrecy oath. They can never talk about, about what they're doing. I'll talk about some of it because I got it from open source, and I know how to do that. <laughs> so, because I have to be real careful. I have to watch everything I say. This is the deep state. It does exist. There were some of us, a few of us that were talking about the deep state five years ago when it wasn't cool, uh, and no one would say a thing about it. Now, if you listen to any talk show now, they're all talking about the deep state because it's kind of safe. Everybody's talking about the deep state, but they're claiming, well, they're, they're Obama holdovers uh, in, in the deep state, and that's really what it is. Uh, uh, that's a smokescreen. The deep state and shadow government go back for every, every presidential administration going back to 1947. So it's not Obama holdovers, and I'll show you why in a moment. It is massive. The military-industrial military complex, Eisenhower, when he gave that speech, originally called it the military-industrial-congressional complex, because Congress is tied in so deeply with, with the military-industrial complex, it's disgusting. <clears throat> but uh, they uh, convinced him to take Congress out of the military-industrial complex speech that he gave. Congress is very much involved in the military and complex and the deep state, and you'll see in a moment why they promise us one thing and then they vote on something exactly the opposite. The lobbyists in Washington, D.C., I think, spend $4.8 million a year lobbying the Congress and the Senate to get their way. We'll call it the MIC just for short. Wall Street, directly connected to the deep state at the hip, and it is so connected to the Treasury now, they're almost like business partners. And a lot of Wall Street has billions in offshore accounts that nobody knows about, connected to, directly to the D Department of Treasury, which has a secret database on us, by the way. Most people don't know that. Treasury has its own secret database. It has opened the back door for the NSA and the CIA to come in and look at financial information on us. Just found that out. Foreign lobbyists, Israel and Saudi Arabia, I'm not making a comment on either one, but they might as well have a Senate or congressional seat. The amount of power and influence they have over our elected officials is phenomenal. And the millions and millions of dollars that they contribute is also phenomenal. Defense contractors bound by the deep state, intelligence contractors, I will get into these. There's something that I call <clears throat> the secret intelligence uh, complex, industrial complex. We've got the military industrial complex, We've got the secret intelligence industrial complex, just as big, just as powerful, nobody knows about. We'll talk about that. The Federal Reserve. <clears throat> you could call this the economic shadow government. If anybody has studied the Federal Reserve, my gosh. And when you know how that thing operates and what it's doing, it took the freedom, the constitutional freedom economic of Americans away in 1913, that far back. It is run by international bankers in secret. It is not... A federal agency, it is a private bank made up of international bank, banks that run our entire economic policy. So this is an economic shadow government all by itself. But it's more of a part of the deep state because it's, it's economic. From the Council on Foreign Relations came the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. Do you see globalism happening here? You mentioned the world New, order, New World Order and everybody freaks out. It's a conspiracy theory. And you will just set that aside because there is a global ec economic or or order with these going on right now outside of our Constitution running American economics now. You want to call it the New World Order? You want to call it the globalist order? You want to call it what Susan Rice and Barack Obama called it, the New International World Order? You can call it whatever you want. Uh, but this global order exists and it is running our country. More on that coming up. Now, I tried my level best to distill all this, these volumes of things down to try to make it simple how this happened. <clears throat> the global banking elite, the Morgans, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, um, way, 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 way back with Cecil Rhodes going all the way back to South Africa, planned, uh, started secret societies because they wanted a global economic world order. <clears throat> In other words, they wanted economic rulership of the world because that way they'd bring world peace and there'd no longer be national uh, division. The odd thing is the majority of them were engaged in the occult. Some of them very deeply engaged in the occult. And that thread followed these rich families all the way through and still does today. Um, just an interesting side fact. Guess who created the Federal Reserve? The global financial bankers had a secret meeting at Jekyll Island. We've been there. We stayed there. That's where they created the Federal Reserve. They deceptively worded it in a bill so it got by Congress. Congress passed it, not even realizing what they just did. And the Federal Reserve essentially took over the US economy. 
It is and has global financial control of the entire U.S. economy right now. The Federal Reserve does. I'm going to get into that in detail because I have to because it's so important. Guess who created the Council on Foreign Relations? The Rockefellers, the Morgans, the Rothschilds, especially the, the Morgan-Rothschild connection. They created the Council on Foreign Relations. It was not created by Congress. It was not created by vote. It was not created by the American people. It was created by the global bankers. What they did was they took global control over all of, of the U.S. economy, and the, the Council on Foreign Relations did and still does controls our foreign policy. So the Federal Reserve controls our finances. The Council on Foreign Relations controls all of our foreign policy and our foreign wars. Now, still does, through the Department of State. They, they eventually were uh, responsible for the creation of the MIC, the Military Industrial Complex. And the CFR, from its very beginning, established a mechanism to control, guess what? The news media, going way back to 1921, up to 1976 which mocking, with Mockingbird and beyond. This is propaganda that goes out to get the, the American public to support wars like Iraq, Syria, and, and all these other things where they send these talking heads out to the, to the news networks to get popular support for these wars without a vote from the American people. The CFR created the Central Intelligence Agency, which as a, as a recovering CIA officer, I'm going to be talking about in great detail at some risk, but you know, it's a dirty job as they say. Someone's got to do it. That came right out of the Council on Foreign, Relation, Foreign Relations, and most of the members of the CFR became directors and members of the CIA. And you'll see this thread go all the way down through history up until today where it's, it's getting worse. So they began the covert action program. The CIA's covert action program is un unconstitutional and it's illegal <clears throat> and it should not exist. And I'll go into the bloody things that have happened as a result of that down through the years. Out of that came the creation of the secret intelligence budget. Congress doesn't know about it. We don't know about it. Billions of dollars are spent, foreign wars, coups, overturning governments. None of us have a say in that. Congress doesn't even know how much they're spending. Now, I've been at the other end of the secret budget, <clears throat> and I have to be careful, but I can tell you um, the money doesn't always go for ethical things. Let's just put it that way, okay? But it's a secret budget. Out of that came the secret intelligence agencies and the surveillance state that we have right now. We are in, I think it was John Whitehead called it, uh, we're in an electronic concentration camp. We are surveilled, spied, monitored on from space, through our cell phones, smart TVs. It's all around us. We, uh, we have no privacy. Privacy is dead. Constitutional privacy, I'm, so, I'm sorry to say, is, is gone. December 22nd, 1913, I call that the year that the Constitution died. That was a year that they created the Federal Reserve Act. And the Federal Reserve came to life and took control of the American economy away from Congress and away from the American people. And that was the end of our Constitution right there. Then there was a second death in 1947 with the National Security Act of 1947 and the creation of the CIA as a covert branch of government that does pretty much what it wants to do when it wants to do it outside of the Constitution. So it died a second time in 1947. So that far back, folks, we lost our Constitution that far back. Now, inside the government, any, any of you that know anything about the CIA, the NSA, or any of the intelligence agencies, their charter is you're only supposed to have a foreign mission, right? You're not supposed to spy on American citizens. That used to be against the law until 9-11 happened. Now, I want to stress, the NSA's domestic surveillance program that was spying on all of us, our computers, our cell phones, our internet traffic, our smart TVs, and on and on and on, it's collecting 1.5 billion pieces of information, not on terrorists, but on us a day through the NSA surveillance program. The NSA surveillance program, program was going on before 9-11. Everybody says, and it, it amplified, but that the NSA domestic surveillance program was as a result of 9-11. Of no, it was going on before 9-11 happened, just so you know. Uh, that's just an excuse. But now inside the United States, this is, this is the size of the shadow government that we now have functioning inside the United States through fusion centers watching us. There are 10,000 secret sites of the shadow government within the United States of America across the country. 10,000 secret sites inside the United States, not in a foreign country, inside the U.S. 1,271 secret agencies now are involved inside the U.S. with secrecy. 1,931 big 
Private corporations are now involved in government secrecy inside the U.S. I think it was Dana, Dana, Dana Priest and William Arkin did a tremendous piece of journalism on this, and I hope they got a Pulitzer Prize. I don't know if they did, but man, did they come up with a, with a tremendous uh, study on this. 4,800,000 people that we know of hold government security clearances and have signed the government secrecy agreement and will never be able to talk about what they've done. Okay? 4.8 million, uh, that we know of. It's more than that. 854,000 people they found out on paper through a really fascinating search. 854,000 people have top secret government clearances, the next level up. You can't even breathe what you're doing to anybody or you're behind bars for 20 years. So that, that number of people, and again, uh, I would call this a, cons a conservative estimate <laughs> based on, on my background. Inside the United States, millions of Americans through the deep state, the shadow government, and their associated contractors have signed government secrecy oaths or secrecy agreements. Millions of Americans inside the United States are bound by the secrecy oath. And uh, as I said, I'm recovering. I executed thousands of those uh, myself. So I know what they are, and I know what they can do. And then uh, it put a friend of mine, John Kiriakow, who exposed the torture program, they put him in jail for two years for a, a simple mistake. So um, inside the United States of America, people, not outside, not in a foreign country, bound by the secrecy agreement. I will get into this in some detail. Those of you from Waycross, Georgia, or nearby, uh, we talked about Waycross, I think, in, in the lecture I gave there. Uh, the, the state secrets privilege, the most tyrannical power of the U.S. government, actually was created with a crash in Waycross, Georgia, and we'll talk about that later. The CIA and the NSA can shut down any case against it that it does not like using the state secrets privilege. Shut it down, seal the evidence, and not even Congress can get access to it ever. Just stop it, just like that. Ironically, the wording of the state secrets privilege was derived from the monarchy of the King of England, his executive privilege. They actually took the wording from the very province we were supposed to rebel against and used it to create the state secret, secrets privilege to silence Americans from talking about anything that the shadow government does. Now, the military industrial congressional complex, I like to stick that back in there, uh, and you'll see why. It's gonna make you mad when you see what this, the influence this has over congressmen and senators. Here it is. The Congressional Armed Services Committee has 48 senior members, acting senior members, and they vote on the Defense Authorization Act. They just voted the act again, act increased it. They vote on the Defense Authorization Act, and they decide which of the major military industrial corporations get the money. Lockheed Martin, one of the big dogs on the block. They do surveillance on us, on, on, for the US government. Lockheed Martin holds the contract to monitor everything that we do with the International Re Revenue Service. All of your paper correspondence, your telephone calls, and anything you do with the IRS is monitored by Lockheed Martin on, on the part of the, the, the MIC, the military industrial complex. General Dynamics, a big one. Bom bombs, planes, and missiles. That's what these people do. Do you think that their motivation is peace? Or do you think their motivation is war and let's keep cranking this stuff out because we've got to get more contracts? That's the system. Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, Boeing, and of course, this is where uh, Booz Allen Hamilton, Edward Snowden, uh, he came out of, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, was Booz. Booz goes way back. This, in the military industrial complex, one trillion, one trillion with a T, annual spending for defense-related purposes. And guess who the biggest arms dealer in the world is? us, the United States government. I wish I could say I used to be involved in that, but I can't. <laughs> um, 46 billion a year in foreign arms sales to governments like Pakistan that hate us, and Saudi Arabia, whose basic doctrine is the elimination of the West. And we're giving this kind of money to these people. Now, I want you to look at these, these congressmen and senators. These military industrial contractors give an average of $700,000 a year in contributions to these congressmen and senators' re-election campaigns and their leadership uh, PACs, uh, political action uh, committees. $700,000 a year come out of these, these companies into these congressmen and senators. One of the most uh, prominent ones is, is this fellow, John McCain. Personally, humbly, I call him the shadow senator. He is so deeply tied into the shadow government, the deep state, it's almost nauseating. He gets 
$694,508 a year into his pocket for supporting war, <laughs> arms, bullets, and bombs, and the military-industrial complex. War's big business for old John. That's why we saw his picture with Al-Qaeda members over in, in Syria, smiling. And it turns out one of them was Al-Qaeda and the other was an ISIS leader. Uh, that's what happens when you get into greed and, and power without even knowing it. Maybe you wind up with the wrong crowd. So can you see where the influence is on our elected officials? This is just one fragment of the iceberg here. Uh, they tell us one thing. We're going to improve your financial life and your, your peace and security. Then they go to Washington and they do something exactly the opposite. They vote for covert wars, bloody conflicts in Syria, where we have been responsible for over 500,000 deaths now in Syria. The place is just blown to bits by the moderate Free Syrian Army. The Free Syrian Army went into a Christian village, and the Islamic U.S.-supported FC Free Syrian Army massacred an, an entire village of Christians that were protected by the Assad regime. But see that? Do you hear that in the media anywhere? No, of course not. No. The deep state and the shadow government, they want these wars to happen. More on that later. So you can see the problem. Now, what most people don't know exists, and this I think is where Drudge picked this up in Zero Hedge, is this, the secret intelligence industrial complex. Most people aren't even aware it's out there. Why? Because it's secret. It's the shadow government. I want you to see the massive size of this. It's consisted of the CIA, the NSA, the NGA, and the NRO, which I already talked about. These are the big dog companies. Lido's Holdings, multi-billion dollar company. CSRA, CACI, these folks are responsible for the torture program, which was only waterboarding, not much more than that. You've got SAIC. SAIC had a contract with NSA. Um, it was the Trailblazer program, which was the domestic surveillance program. Turns out it was an abject failure in its first iteration. And SAIC uh, messed up the, Congress, the, the, the contract and cost seven, they lost seven billion dollars. The whole thing failed. Do you think SAIC received any discipline from that? No. They're still right in there with the government getting big contracts. They just walked right through it unscathed. That's how, that's how the uh, shadow government works. Booz Allen Hamilton has been working for the intelligence community for so long, it goes all the way back. They helped establish the intelligence agency system in Egypt, going way back then. That's how big Booz Allen Hamilton was. This is where Ed, Edward Snowden came out, came out of Booz uh, and blew the whistle. I can tell you this. Uh, Edward Snowden, by his own admission, had watched the Thomas Drake case. Thomas Drake came out and blew the whistle on the NSA surveillance program. What'd they do? They arrested him at gunpoint with an FBI SWAT team and charged him with espionage for trying to reveal that the government was spying on American people. Edward Snowden saw that happen to Thomas Drake and, that, and did what he did. Now, do you think if Snowden had stuck around and tried to go through the system, he'd still be here? No, no. So he's right. They would have gotten rid of him in some pretty creative ways. But it was the Thomas Drake case at Booz Allen Hamilton, or, or the, uh, yeah, the Thomas Drake, Drake case in NSA, and NSA got him to do that. Now look at this. $50 billion annually of our tax revenue is spent by the secret intelligence industrial complex. $50 billion. Did anybody know that their tax dollars were going to that? Anybody vote for that? Anybody even know about that? No. That's a lot of money. Well, how about this? These are top secret, unelected, unreported companies that do work that the American people are completely unaware of. And some of it is pretty uh, nefarious, for lack of a better term. I used, I, I, I used to be there. Some of it is flat out unconstitutional. Some of it is illegal. There should, people should be in jail, some of them. They have no accountability to Congress, no accountability to the, the American people and no constitutional accountability whatsoever. Now, what do you think will happen to any sort of group of organizations if they are in secrecy and have no accountability? What do you think is going to happen? Just like the Founding Fathers said, they're going to go bad every single time. Secrecy breeds corruption. It does. So we've got the secret intelligence industrial complex hidden behind the scenes that nobody knows about, at least until now. So this is the size of the massive secrecy complex that we have that's being paid for with our tax dollars. You've got the CIA, my former home, that has grown into a huge organization from what it used to be. You've got the National Security Agency. You've got uh, the National Geospatial, Geospatial Agency and uh, an overhead picture of the National Reconnaissance Office. Massive, massive organizations. Thousands and thousands and thousands of Americans inside the United States bound by secrecy oaths, okay? So basically, 
it's established a global digital surveillance order. And most of our allies are a little upset at this. We're not just spying on us, we're spying on everyone. The NSA has got connections, global connections all over the world. So we've got a global digital surveillance network. I want you to look at this because this slide is, at least in my humble view, is upsetting. Uh, I went in and I did some research to find out what the, the, the cost, the actual cost in tax dollars of the shadow government and the deep state. How much of our tax money are they spending on these things? Well, let's look at it. 50 billion annually is the total intelligence budget, tax revenue. 598 billion is the total defense budget. 150 billion is the cost of overseas military bases, many of which are no longer needed. 5.9 billion military aid to foreign countries like Pakistan. As I mentioned earlier, people who hate us, we give them millions a year uh, out of the shadow, out shadow government funds. Four billion, I mentioned this earlier, is about what's spent from congressional, uh, on lobbying Congress on behalf of, of uh, Lido's Holdings and others. About uh, four billion annually is spent just on lobbying Congress alone. Now, let's look at us. Let's look at, that's, that's 803 billion in tax revenue that's spent, I understand, from other sources, it's more like a trillion dollars is spent a year on the deep state and shadow government complexes. About a trillion a year is probably a better figure. I just broke this down specifically from what I could dig out, but it's about, it's about a trillion is what they're spending of our tax dollars. Anybody vote for that? I know I didn't. Anybody know about that? <laughs> yeah. Now look at this. What's the cost to Americans' vital security? Does not the Constitution say that government's function is to protect the safety and security of Americans and, and serve the people. Isn't that the whole idea? Well, this is what's, what's happening to Americans. Social Security has been stolen. They've taken all the money out of Social, social Security and spent it on this stuff. It's now in the red. And this, this is not an, they try to call it an entitlement program. I don't know about you all, but I put hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month into Social Security so it would be a retirement someday. And they took it completely and they spent it on this. How about this? Medicare. I mean, these people are suffering. People are, you know, another entitlement program. We've got to cut this back because we've got such, such a, we have a budget deficit. I'll tell you where you can cut it back. You can cut it back right here. But they're not touching that. They're expanding that. How about this? Medicaid. They're defunding Medicaid. It's, a, it's another entitlement program. There are people in the United States who are poor and they need help. And the government is supposed to be helping them. Oh, you want to? You want socialism. Did I say that? <laughs> you, know, you, you want to take care of American safety and security and then they brand you as a socialist? No. I'm a constitutionalist. Hello. How about this one? Healthcare. Took decades for them to come up with a healthcare program while Americans went bankrupt, suffered, and especially the aged, they died without insurance. Uh, shame on the Republicans. I was a Republican for 20 years. Shame, shame on the Republicans for never doing anything about that. Now, when the Democrats did, they brought in the big government and just made it worse. Welcome to government. Welcome to both parties. But now they're working out a health care program. The initial one was, well, OK, we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of Obamacare. We'll come up with another health care program. But we're not going to cover any pre-existing conditions. Or we're going to make it really expensive. You could probably nudge somebody next to you and, and you got a pre-existing condition. You know, pro pro most of our friends have pre-existing conditions. That's probably over half the population have pre-existing conditions. I mean, come on, please. Anybody over 50 probably has a pre-existing condition, okay? Uh, infrastructure is crumbling. Uh, unemployment is twice what the government reports it is. Americans are suffering. And, how could, and there's actually po poverty in the United States. How can this be when we're spending this amount of money on stuff that we don't even know about and we're not even voting for? I mean, that's an outrage. Uh, people are starting to not just get educated on that, but they're starting to get upset. And that's where things start to change. When people get upset enough to, to take action, now we're getting somewhere. Okay? All right. Uh, I want to talk about this one um, at, at maybe some personal risk. I, I, can, I consider the CIA as the central node of the shadow government because of its unbridled, unconstitutional power, which it has. Unbelievable amount of power with no congressional oversight. They say there is, but there ain't at all. It, it manipulates the other intelligence branches. The director of national security was supposed to stop that. I can tell you he doesn't. The CIA still is manipulating these people, these agencies. It controls multiple defense intelligence corporations, which I've talked about. 
It manipulates the president and his political decisions. Remember false intelligence that led us into Iraq and the death of 500,000 Iraqi citizens and 5,000 troops and 200,000 American troops that were injured on top of that based on false intelligence, which most of us are convinced was intentional. Power to start wars, torture, drones. They've conducted 80 coups overseas, multiple false flags, false terrorist attacks in Italy conducted by the CIA to make it look like the Italian government did it. Killed 491 innocent people. It was a CIA false op made to look like a terrorist attack. Google it. It's in the history books. They did it. I have a friend, Paul Williams. I'll put a plug in. He wrote a book called uh, Operation Gladio, The Unholy Alliance. Uh, the connection between the, uh, the CIA, the mafia, and the Vatican. The CIA used the mafia to run drugs, and they laundered the money through the Vatican. Uh, Paul's book, I endorsed it. I wasn't until I read it. He's got 2,000 documented footnotes in that book that proves that that happened, that the CIA was running drugs, laundering the money through the Vatican to stage false terrorist attacks in Italy. They were doing it. It's documented. And it gets worse. These are unelected officials that make these massive, huge decisions. It manipulates Congress with secrecy. I'll show you how they do that. They manipulate Congress with impunity by the power of secrecy. And I'll show you how they do that. They manipulate the judiciary with the state secret privilege, shutting cases down, forcing them to shut cases down. And surprisingly, their budget was, is secret because if anybody knew what they're spending this money on, there would be no CIA. I can tell you that right now. It would be gone. But see, that's what secrecy does. It hides dark activity. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist. It has been calculated, I think pretty accurately, that because of CIA operations and coups, about 7 million people have died as a result of CIA covert operations. Largely innocent people. Places like Chile, where they supported Augusto Pinochet and the death squads, cost the lives of 46,000 men, women, and children. Some of the, some of the ladies were pregnant. And 200,000 Chileans disappeared. They don't know where they went. That was a CIA-supported coup. And they actually paid some of Pinochet's uh, death squads uh, with our tax dollars. It kind of makes you, upset you a little bit. All right. This is a quote. I have this in my book from Harry Truman. Harry Truman reluctantly created the Central Intelligence Agency. He said this afterwards. I think it was two years later. There's something about the way the CIA has been functioning that is casting a shadow on our historic position of freedom, and I think we need to correct it. Later, he called it a sinister and mysterious agency and then said he regretted ever forming it in the first place. That was only two years after its creation. It had gone rogue already. Well, and I'll show you some of that uh, in, in a bit. Interesting enough, remember I mentioned the Council on Foreign Relations and its connection to the mainstream media, specifically the Washington Post? Uh, still the Washington Post, in my humble view? Amazon just entered into a $600 million contract with, guess who, the CIA? Who does Amazon own? The Washington Post. What a coincidence. Uh, nothing ever changes. This is a cycle. This is a system. Anyway, this was published in the Washington Post. Everybody freaked out, and then it was deleted three days later, and never published again. The Post pulled it. Somebody happened to grab it before they were able to do that. All right. What is going on in Washington, D.C. right now? Does it appear like there's a war, maybe? of some kind happening. It's like, you know, when there's a thunderstorm, when the cold air hits the hot air, boom, there's a thunderstorm. You've got the shadow government hitting this out of the box guy, Donald Trump, who's not a part of, by, uh, I think it was Newt Gingrich said, he's not a part of any of the secret societies. You've got the shadow government and the CIA and Donald Trump. Whatever you think of Donald Trump is irrelevant. They're colliding. And there is a thunderstorm. And I, I, in all my 20 years of government, I never saw anything even remotely close to this. So there's an internal Cold War, the shadow government versus the elected government. The C Remember what some of the things Donald Trump said before the election? He's going to go on and, and investigate the CIA and some of their past activities. He's going to look at the JFK assassination. He wasn't so convinced that 9-11 was above board. He wanted to look into the NSA domestic spying program. All these things he was saying before he was elected. And of course, everybody's like, he'll never get in. Hey, go ahead, blow your smoke. Then he gets elected. And the shadow government is like, Homer Simpson, don't. Oh, my. What are, we, what are we going to do? I mean, they're, they're freaking out, literally. And, and you can see that coming out in the press. This is the size of the shadow government. Huge complex of secrecy, surveillance, and covert programs the size of 23 U.S. Capitol buildings, three Pentagons. And if you remember this, the CIA just recently, a couple years ago, spied on the U.S. Senate. They cracked into the Senate computers, 
surveilled them when they, they were writing, uh, Diane Feinstein and the Select Committee were writing the report on CIA torture program. Remember that? The CIA actually broke into the, C into the Senate computers on Capitol Hill and accessed that report. That's a felony. That's, a, that, that's multiple felonies. Uh, was anybody charged for that? Was John Brennan indicted for doing that? Did he even get a slap on the wrist? No. Nothing happened. Now, President Obama, they said, uh, President Obama, what do you think about this? The, the CIA just hacked into the Senate on Capitol Hill. Now that, what are you going to do about this? He said, well, I have all full confidence in John Brennan was his response. But most people think, well, that was a political backup. No. The chilling thing is President Obama could do nothing about what the CIA was doing. Obama could do nothing about the fact that the CIA had cracked into the Senate. So he just said, I support John Brennan. And he, he, there's nothing he could do. He did not have the power to, to over, overturn or subvert the CIA. That's how bad this is. Okay? So what does John Brennan do when he's called before the Senate and put on the hot seat for bugging the U.S. Senate? What, this is what the CIA always does. He threatens them. Well, you had unauthorized access to CIA classified information on those computers, is what he said. And you, you know what the penalties of that are? Could be prison. So you, you're saying I spied on the Senate. Well, I'm telling you, you had unauthorized access to CIA documents, and you could go to prison for it. That was his comeback. And I know, because I was in there, that is their MO. They always do that. That's how the, the shadow government works. But that is actually what he did. He threatened the Senate with prosecution for accessing, accessing CIA shadow government documents. Outrageous. Secrecy, and I, I'd like everybody to remember this, secrecy outside constitutional uh, constraints, con corruption and failure are inevitable. Government itself is going to go bad every time. That's one of the genius things the Founding Fathers knew after all the research and history they looked at. Government will go bad every time. People in powerful positions of government will go bad every time. Secret government goes really bad <laughs> over time because there's no accountability. You take anybody with no scruples or ethics or some sort of uh, accountability, they're going to go bad. It's human nature. This is some of the, the corruption that's happened because of secrecy. Do you remember Pearl Harbor? Now, they said, we're creating the CIA because we don't want another Pearl Harbor. You've probably heard that before. Did you know that FDR had received hard intelligence that the Japanese were going to attack Pearl Harbor before it happened? He removed the defensive ships from Pearl Harbor that could have stopped that attack held the in intelligence along with Winston Churchill and allowed that attack to happen. Now, if you don't believe that, I have an intelligence hour program where I, bought, where I brought uh, retired uh, Admiral Ace Lyons on, former commander of the Pacific Fleet, interviewed Ace on this, and he said, bullseye. That's exactly what FDR did. So we got this right out of the horse's mouth. So even the creation of the CIA is based on a fallacy. They could have prevented Pearl Harbor. 2,700 Americans, I think, uh, something like that, died in Pearl Harbor, and they went into a war that probably was unnecessary. I understand the Japanese, according to Ace, uh, Admiral Lyons, Japanese tried to surrender, I think, five times, and it was ignored, and they, and they pushed the war forward anyway. Uh, Pearl Harbor was a myth. Iran, the, the Iran we have now was started when the CIA, the Iranian government accepted by the people, it was, it was a peaceful government, uh, almost, almost an ally, but the Iran took control of all of the oil and gas pipelines in the country of Iran, which was a lot, and uh, took it away from the British and away from the Americans and nationalized the oil system in Iran. So the CIA, along with some of the U.S. corporations, said, no, 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 we cannot have the Iran having power over this oil. So the CIA went into Iran, staged a coup, got, got uh, riots in the streets, people were killed. That government was overthrown, and guess who replaced it? Ay 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 Ayatollah Khomeini and the creation of Hezbollah took its place. And now, what do we have now? The Iran and the nuclear deal was started with a CIA coup in the beginning over a government that was not trying to hurt anybody, started with a, with a, with a coup that removed a peaceful government to get the oil and the gas. Research it, it's there. And the CIA created the problem we have with Iran right now because of an illegal, unconstitutional operation. Afghanistan, we went into Afghanistan against the Soviets, remember that? Uh, that was back in my days. And, uh, we taught the Mujahideen radical Islamic cells. We taught them how to blow up cars, how to build bombs, how to shoot missiles, stingers, and the whole shebang. Taught them all that stuff. And after the Soviets pulled out, uh, do you think um, the Mujahideen stayed uh, faithful to the United States? 
No, that's not who they are. What happened? They created ISIS. And they, well, originally they created Al-Qaeda, which morphed into ISIS. But out of Afghanistan, the Mujahideen, once the U.S. had pulled out, created Al-Qaeda, came back around, boom, and became our enemy. Started by a CIA operation. That back, in, in, in intelligence circles, we call that blowback. When you do an operation thinking that you're a real big dog and then it all goes wrong and comes back the exact opposite way, that's pretty much the history of the CIA if you read, read through some of these operations. Essentially, the CIA is responsible for the creation of Al-Qaeda. That is not an understatement. Okay? The fall of the Soviet Union. I was there. It was a complete surprise to the CIA. The CIA had, had, it was a, they had no idea the Soviet Union was about to fall. This is the, is the most powerful Intelligence agency of the world, the top of the evolutionary heap is what we th thought of ourselves, uh, the, above the little people. Uh, and when you get that kind of arrogant, narcissistic mindset, you start doing stupid things. So when the Soviet Union fell, the CIA was like, oh, duh, what just happened? They had no idea. They completely missed it. Iraq. The CIA, many people think it was intentional because they had a vendetta against Iraq, provided false intelligence to the President of the United States that led us to one of the worst military moves in United States history. Then we have Libya. We ran guns into Libya. We didn't like Muammar Gaddafi, although he was giving us intelligence on Al-Qaeda. He destroyed his weapons of mass destruction. He told us, hey, if you want to take over Libya, I'll move into a safe haven country. If you want, I'll get out of there. I'll do any, anything you want. But Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, and I'm not making a political statement, they, they committed what was a de facto assassination, and they pushed for his murder anyway to overturn that government, which is now in the hands of radical Islamists, largely Al-Qaeda and Al-Fuqa and others have taken control of Libya and it is an absolute mess and we've lost total control and it is now connected to ISIS and the Free Syrian Army up in Syria. Another mess. 9-11. Don't have time to go off on this one, but I can tell you this, the CIA had direct information before 9-11 uh, of the alleged hijackers because they were assets. They knew who they were, but they refused to provide the information to the FBI. After 9-11 happened, they were the only federal agency to refuse to provide any information about what the CIA knew before the attack. Just flat out refused. Said, nope, not going to do it. It's classified. And 9-11, the 9-11 Commission was never able to put that in the report. Uh, we could spend a few hours on that one. There have been massive intelligence failures within the CIA. You, you would laugh if, if, you, if you knew what they were. Massive intelligence failures that people will never know about because uh, they're secret. If they did know about them, the place wouldn't exist. Uh, so there's a lot of failures that people don't know about because it's a classified complex. So corruption and failure are in inevitable whenever there is a secret form of government. It is the nature of the beast. Not an understatement. Blood on its roots. When you have an organization whose roots are dark from the beginning over history, the roots usually supply the life to the tree and then eventually the fruit. And I just want to make this point. The CIA's past, human rights violations in Chile, 80 bloody coups, torture, rendition, and secret prisons were happening in the first four years of the CIA. Does that sound familiar? It just happened again, didn't they? Same root, same fruit. False flag terrorist attacks in Italy and more. Assassinations with impunity. Operation Phoenix in Vietnam. They killed, assassinated 26,000 people. The press never reported on because they were suspected of being connected, civilians, connected to the, the Vietnamese. A huge assassination program called Operation Phoenix. Collaborating with the enemy, Alan Dulles and the CIA secretly moved Nazi war criminals into the United States with false papers and made them scientists within, this, within the CIA working on behalf of the American government. High level uh, Nazi war criminals. Alan Dulles actually worked with top, the, the CIA director, worked with top Nazi officials. Overthrowing democratic governments, which they've done many times, politically motivated intelligence leaks. Now, this is, this is the past. This is the first uh, 10 years of the CIA. Does any of this look familiar today? <laughs> blood on the fruit, on the root, blood on the fruit. Same organization, hasn't changed at all. And we all know about the whole nother day here, some of you know, MK Ultra Mind Control Program, nasty, disgusting stuff. I know one of the uh, ladies whose dad was one of the CIA attorneys at the time MK Ultra was, was being exposed, and he could not stomach what was happening there. She'd drive into work every day, and he was just uh, incensed by what MK Ultra was doing. Are they still doing it? Well, uh, I'll let you decide about that one. 
Uh, Operation Paperclip, moving Nazi criminals in. Operation Mockingbird, seeding stories into the mainstream media and the press. Uh, they allegedly stopped that in 1976. No, they didn't. They, the wording is, uh, they can't pay journalists anymore, but now it's voluntary. So, okay, so Mockingbird still exists then. If it's voluntary, and the CIA has ways of making people volunteer to provide information. I know that personally when I tried to put my book out. All right, and Operation Gladio, uh, I really recommend the book Operation Gladio, false, uh, false terrorist attacks, killed people, made it look like terrorists did it. I want to stress this, the CIA as the central node of the shadow government, just remember that because I'm going to call for at the end of this lecture um, for the dismantling and the rescinding the National Security Act of 1947, which gave the CIA uh, authority for covert operations. That should be rescinded because of the things that they have done. But the CIA was created through the National Security Act of 1947, which states that the CIA is accountable only to the president through the National Security Council if the president knows about it. Truman later regretted it. And this is the wording. This is the wording that created CIA covert operations. Covert operations are mentioned nowhere giving the CIA the power to do that. Nowhere. This is what it says. Allows the CIA to, quote, perform such other functions and duties as the National Security Council may from time to time direct. Now, do you hear uh, covert operations, bloody coups, uh, supporting terror cells? Do you hear any of that in there? That's because there is no definition of what the CIA's power was, and there was no restriction on what the CIA could do with this secret budget. Absolutely out of control. I remember when I was in there, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, absolutely out of control. Created without congressional approval. Congress had nothing to do with the creation of the CIA. As a matter of fact, goodness, the Department of State, the FBI, uh, much of Congress were completely against the CIA because they were afraid it was going to be another Nazi Secret Service kind of organization. That's the way they put it. They were afraid it was going to be a, a national police, secret police, was their, was their fear. Truman did it anyway uh, and later regretted it, but it was created without Congress. Now, who represents the people? Who, who, who's the only people we have that represent us? It's Congress, right? Constitutionally, Congress is the constitutional voice of the people who run the government, right? The CIA was, cre was created without any of that, outside the Constitution completely. This, its original form, Foggy Bottom down in Washington, was a single building. What Truman wanted, with, which we should have gotten was an objective intelligence agency that collected intelligence and provided it to the president for policy making. There's nothing wrong with that. It was the covert operations part that went bad. So originally Truman wanted a bunch of intelligence analysts collecting information both from the field and, and providing him with foreign intelligence to make decisions. Nothing wrong with that at all. The only problem is, is the covert action side, it got out of control. This is the size of it today. That's my former home where I used to live. It's massive. Covert operations are massive, largely unknown, their size and scope, and the amount of money that's paid for these things. In comes this out-of-the-box fella by the name of, name of Donald Trump. Donald Trump challenges the NSA and the CIA even before he got in office, if any of you remember that. And Senator Chuck Schumer, the uh, Senate Minority Leader, comes out and says this, very chilling. If you cross the intelligence community, they, the CIA and the NSA, have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. Do you understand what he's saying there? He's saying, Mr. President, if you cross the CIA, they're going to get you. That's what he's saying. I heard that. My wife and I, we stopped. We're like, what? Of course, from my background, I was like, duh. <laughs> but but that, that's what he's saying. The only time in history we have ever heard that kind of thing before was Alan Dulles and John F. Kennedy. Alan Dulles, director of the CIA, John F. Kennedy, said he's going to shatter, shatter the CIA into a thousand pieces. The only time before we're... The shadow government has come against an elected president was JFK. Uh, that's why we're seeing the war uh, that we're seeing in Washington. And I'm going to get into the Russian dossier here in a little bit, and you're going to find out that essentially is a shadow government operation, and I'll show you why. Whatever your opinion of Donald Trump, the shadow government fears being exposed. That's the thunderstorm that's happening in Washington. That's what's going on. They want him gone, terminated. I and mean, they're doing a character assassination right now on him and his kids and his business partners. They just indicted uh, Paul Manafort. You've, you all have heard that. Do you know that Paul Manafort, they, you know what they indicted him for? Colluding with the Russians on behalf of the Podesta group, which was a Hillary Clinton, that's her former campaign manager. So he's not indicted for colluding with, with the Russians for Trump. They just indicted him for colluding with the Russians on behalf of the Podesta group, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager. Did you hear that anywhere in the mainstream media? Yeah. 
Yeah, it is absolute collusion, but uh, oops, it's on the wrong side. But they're making it look like Manafort has just been indicted because of his connections to Donald Trump. That's not it at all. It's a lie. So, Chowder Government Operations, the dossier. Let's talk about this. You, you've heard of the dossier out there. Oh, my gosh. The golden shower in Moscow. And as disgusting as it gets, if you go through the, all of the facts and the dossier and you boil them down and distill them, which I did ad nauseum, this is what you get. Russian intelligence supplied false information and interfered with the presidential election and uh, fusion GPS and uh, Mr. Steele, a former British intelligence officer, if there is such a thing, paid senior Russian security officers to provide the information on Donald Trump. They got the information from senior Russian intelligence officers in Moscow. That's kind of collusion there, isn't it? But it was to dig up dirt on Donald Trump, not to eliminate him. So they went to, to Russian intelligence. Now, I, I was a CIA, CIA officer, and I was up against Russian intelligence, sometimes closely. <laughs> you, can, you think you can trust Russian intelligence to give you honest information when you're their espionage enemy? I mean, duh, you know, that's espionage 101. But that's what they did. Then the CIA, John Brennan, labeled it as intelligence, classified it just out of the blue, and leaked it to the news media. The CIA director leaked the contents of the dossier, calling it intelligence, to the news media to make it look like Trump had colluded with the Russians and these prostitutes doing golden showers on Barack Obama's hotel bed or, or uh, such and such. So the CIA labeled it intelligence, leaked it to the news media. Uh, Mockingbird, anyone? Uh, intelligence leaking information to the press against the president? Anybody? Yeah. It was the basis for the FBI getting the warrants to do NSA surveillance on the Trump campaign team. And I think uh, uh, Ms. Powers, the UN ambassador, uh, Susan Powers, I think her first name is Susan, she unmasked 260 names of Americans, uh, Samantha Powers. Samantha Powers used this in the NSA to unmask the identities of 260 Americans. What in the world is the UN ambassador using the NSA to unmask the names of US citizens for? But this is how the FBI got those surveillance warrants was from the dossier information. So the FBI used information from Russian intelligence to get an NSA FISA approval to spy on Donald Trump and his cabinet. I'll just let that sit there for a couple seconds. That's what happened. And we talked about uh, the UN ambassador on mass 260 names. So information used as the basis for the, for the current special prosecutor, once again, the dossier started the ball rolling for the selection of Robert Mueller as the special prosecutor investigating Trump collusion. Remember we talked about Mueller's connection to the, to the deep state shadow government. I, I'm convinced and there's more there with, with Mr. Mueller and Comey for that matter. But uh, the information was used as the basin, basis now for Robert Mueller, the current special prosecutor. Information from Russian intelligence. I, if, I was in counterintelligence in the sea. I'd be rolling over. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if this is happening. I mean, this is, a, this is the top government almost committing espionage with Soviet intelligence. I mean, really, it's that, it's that bad. The FBI even paid this former British spy for information until Christopher Steele's identity was revealed. And then they, they stopped paying and they're like, oh, oh, they pulled the payments back. The FBI was actually paying this guy to connect to the Russians and get this information. Robert Mueller. And the dossier was originally obtained by, guess who? The man that I love so much, the shadow senator, uh, John McCain. Um, he, he sent an emissary over to uh, pick up the dossier from Mr. Steele, brought it back, gave it to the CIA and the FBI, and initiated the investigation, Senator John McCain. And as a former intelligence, I've written uh, lots of intelligence report from some of the stuff I got, some of the stuff that was coming in. Uh, this thing is, I, I've read it, it's poorly written, there's false information, the grammars, is, there's misspelling, the grammar's even bad in this thing. When you're an intelligence officer and you write a report, you get one word mis misspelled, and they kick your pancake maker all the way down the stairs, just for one error. And this thing looks like it was written by a high school kid almost. Uh, what the heck? <laughs> uh, it's, I think they put it together so quickly they didn't bother to, to write a product because they wanted that sucker out there to get this guy Trump, you know? I mean, really. <clears throat> So here it is. Let me just sum this up. As a foreign intelligence officer, as I sifted through this, this is what I came up with. They paid Russian intelligence for the information. Sorry, but I just got to laugh. It's almost funny. They paid Russian intelligence for the information. Then they disseminated, to, disseminated that information from Russian intelligence to the CIA and the FBI. 
Then the CIA leaked it to the press from Russian intelligence. Then the FBI used that for their FISA to do the NSA surveillance on Trump's campaign team. Now, this is all facts. You can go out and verify all of this, all of it. This is just facts by fact by fact. And which eventually led to the special pro prosecutor, Robert Mueller, of 9-11 warrantless wire search lying to Congress four times fame. We could just stop right here and go home and maybe get a Big Mac on the way and then be all be over. <laughs> but that's a, I wish I could say it didn't get worse. Uh, but uh, people need to understand that is a shadow government in my humble, meek and mild view. That's a shadow government operation against a sitting president about as obvious as you can get. Not the Russians trying to get Donald Trump elected, the Russians getting paid to provide information to keep him from being elected. Okay, so what does evil look like in the government? What's the face of evil look like? It's a dark hooded figure hidden away in a smoky room doing nasty things on a computer or a covert operation. What does what the face of evil look like in the creation of the CIA? Mind control experiments on unwitting human subjects with MK Ultra, sex abuse, uh, drugging Americans and Canadians without their knowledge. I think they were trying to, to do split personalities through sexual abuse and other things and some kinds of torture to see if they could split a, a person's personality, turn them into a, a warrior type. Uh, mind control experiments, secret enhanced interrogation and murder. Enhanced interrogation, have we ever heard that lately? This is going on back under, under this guy in the, in the first uh, 10 years of the CIA. Black site detention and rendition. Does that sound familiar? Has that happened recently? Remember, blood on, on the roots, blood on the fruits. Uh, this was done back at, about five to 10 years after the, the CIA's creation. Did we just not see this a few years ago again? Torture, verbal sexual abuse, collaborating with Hitler's Third Reich, smuggling Nazi war criminals out of Germany, overthrowing democratically elected government, huge assassination program, spying on US citizens. Have you seen that lately? Politically motivated intelligence leaks. I think I just showed you one of those. That happened when the CIA was formed. They're doing the same thing. They haven't changed who they are at all. Conspired against the President of the United States. Alan Dulles formed a secret cabal of former high-level CIA officers to try to undermine every policy that JFK was doing. They worked against him at every turn to try to stop him. Um, after JFK was assassinated, guess who they put in charge of the Warren Commission to run it? Alan Dulles, uh, Kennedy's arch enemy, who was arrayed against him, and he coerced the witnesses and what inf information the CIA provided. I'm just saying. Uh, it's a historical fact. So what, is, what does this person look like, this evil, dark, hooded figure? Someone that would do these horrible things. Well, this is what he looks like. Nice, pipe-smoking, Harvard kind of guy. If you met him at a party, you'd think, hey, you know, that's a real educated, upstanding man. Alan Dulles, the director of the CIA, did all this. He and Richard Helms. So. You can't go by what the person looks like. You gotta go by what they, what they do and you gotta go by the, the character of the organization that uh, they're running. We have been, the US has been sleeping with the devil since 1947 and the creation of the CIA. Murders, killing, and beyond that the CIA has done with our tax dollars. Our government has been sleeping with the devil since the National Security Act of 1947. We all got this when we got in there. I used to be a briefer. We used to tell people, uh, you know how you got in here in the CIA? You're the cream of the crop. You're the top of the evolutionary chain, intellectual chain. Do you realize that, and I can't say the exact figure, but 300,000 people apply with this agency a year and only 2% get in, that's you. That means you're smarter than the little people down there. You're special and their heads swell and narcissists, which there are a lot of, they love that stuff. Their head just swells way up. You're like James Bond, you know? That's what you are now, you're James Bond. Well, the only problem with that is did James Bond ever do these things? Drone wedding parties. I think, I think the drone program has droned to date eight wedding parties and killed everybody in the wedding party going after the one suspected terrorist. They can now drone wedding parties not based on hard intelligence but just suspected that the person because of their behavior only may be involved in terrorism. They can hit him with a drone. Eight wedding par parties have been wiped out. Torture and kill prisoners. James Bond ever do that? Spy on his own government. Do you ever do that? Ma'am, I think her name was Ma'am. Do you ever spy on Ma'am? Or I forget the, his boss's name, a lady. Um, did he ever provide false intelligence leading to war? Pay trained human rights violators, stage false terrorist attacks, overthrow de democratically elected governments, plant false stories in British newspapers, create and support terrorism, leak intelligence for political influence, 
conspired to destroy the queen. Did James Bond ever do any of these things? CIA, you are no James Bond. Let's just get that straight right now. Did he ever run drugs for money? That's a whole nother hour there. Um, it's pretty clear that the CIA got into the DEA and manipulated the, the, the DEA, and the CIA has been involved in drug running for years, Operation Gladio being one of those, with secret budgets. Obstruction of, of justice. Remember, violations of the U.S. Constitution are what? A felony, right? I mean, if we're under a, if people under the rule of law, constitutional law, it's a, it's a felony, at least it used to be. Obstruction of justice. Operation Paperclip. The CIA created false files on these Nazi war criminals, made them look like they had no connection to the Third Reich, and then presented them to Truman. Truman read through them and was like, okay, this guy wasn't involved with the Nazis, bring him over. They lied to the president, fabricated the intelligence, got these Nazi war criminals to do scientific experiments, probably MK Ultra related things, inside the United States. MK Files, when it finally went before Congress, what did the CIA do? They destroyed the files before they went to testify. That's why with the release of the JFK files, which never should have been classified in the first place, they should have been public source. But the big controversy about the release of the, J J release of the JFK files, with Trump doing that, I think is, is awesome. But do you think the CIA archived the files of the names of the assassins, if it did or did not use, do you think that they're gonna archive that so it can be retrieved at a later date? I mean, that's laughable. They, did you, they did, in, in MK Ultra, did they say, well, yeah, this is illegal, unconstitutional, human rights violation, but we'll go ahead and start, store these files in archives in 30 years so people can see all the dastardly things we did. <laughs> did you think they did that with JFK? Absolutely not. Uh, that stuff will never see the light of day because it's, it no longer exists. The Warren Commission, the CIA controlled the documents and the witness tampering because they put Alan Dulles, the CIA director, in charge of the Warren Commission. And he decided what CIA officers were going to testify, which ones weren't, and what documents were or were not going to be provided, which were few. Iran-Contra lied to Congress. Congress. The CIA lied to Con A felony. Uh, destroyed all their files, all the Iran-Contra files, and were running drugs uh, to support the Contras. All, not just a violation of U.S. law, it's a violation of international law, obstruction of justice. The torture program. Destroyed all the tapes. Demanded, remember, demanded by the Senate, destroyed all the torture tapes, and then hacked into the computers on, on Senate on Capitol Hill to see what, what kind of goods they had on them. Obstruction of justice to the 10th power. I mean, how much more do you want? Uh, spied on the U.S. Senate, the CIA withheld the JFK documents. I talked about that. They had no right to do that. Uh, you will find out that most of that stuff it has nothing to do with classified operations or sources and methods or anything. That should have been released to the American people from day one, with some exceptions. There may have been a couple of sources, uh, which I strongly doubt. They may have wanted to protect, uh, but I strongly doubt that. One of the things the CIA has done, just so you know, is they uh, got passage of what is called the Covert Identities Protection Act. And what the Covert Identities Protection Act does is make it a felony up to 20 years in prison if you reveal the name of any CIA agent who was undercover or is now undercover, by accident or intentionally. That's how they got John Kiriakow. He accidentally handed someone a business card, not knowing that this guy used to be undercover. Of course, they were, trying, they were waiting for him. And that that's, was their excuse, was that statute. So the CIA can and is, I am sure, because I know them, they're going to say with JFK, well, Covert, Protection, Covert Identities Protection Act, you know, we had covert officers involved back then, and I'm sorry, but the law says we can't reveal any of their names or what they're connected to. Case closed. See how they do it? That's the shadow government. That's the power of secrecy. Okay, more. Abuse of secrecy. Use of unwitting universities. In MK Ultra, they, they had unwitting universities, MIT and others, doing the CIA's mind control experiments, but not knowing they were doing it for the CIA. They thought they were doing noble stuff, and the whole time it was a CIA operation. They lied to the universities and had them conducting these experiments, not even knowing that they were doing it for the CIA, till later. Illegal coups and co covert operations. We talked about, about some of those with Congress. Concealed the activities before the 9-11 attacks. And after the 9-11 Commission issued its report for the American people and transparency, remember, that wasn't that the goal of the figure out what the heck happened? Well, they released it, but there's 28 pages still blacked out. Shadow government favorite. Blacked out 28 pages. Still, George W. Bush had them blacked out. Still blacked out today, 28 pages. That was, that was for the American people. Why are they blacking out 28 pages? I have my own ideas about that. 
I think Saudi intelligence was connected. Saudi intelligence is a close uh, ally of our intelligence. Um, and why is that blacked out? That's a people's document. When they black something out, you probably should be suspicious. Uh, still blacked out today. The CIA invoked the state's secret privilege to cover illegal operations. They've done that multiple times. I'll show you that uh, whenever there's a CIA operation that comes before Congress or somebody files suit because somebody has been killed or in injured, the CIA invokes the state's secret, secret privilege with impunity, shuts the case down, it's sealed from Congress, and it's gone forever. They've, I, I've seen it used personally. They've used it multiple times. It's the greatest tyranny that's ever happened in our government, my, in my view. They bla blacked out documents. Congress demands things and they provide it, but it's all blacked out. I mean, it's meaningless, but they did their job. They I'll show you some examples. They did their job. They provided it. It's obstructive. They're obstructing justice. So, General Michael Hayden, director of the NSA and then director of the CIA. <laughs> Let's shake that one off. Uh, that's double trouble. This is what he said, and you know, I think maybe we ought to take this to heart. Maybe not. We obey the law. Trust us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, probably one of the biggest fibs ever told in, in the history of humankind. <laughs> just trust us. Don't look into us. Don't investigate. Just trust us. The National Security Agency is removing deeper into the, into the shadow government. Massive system of global surveillance. Remember the USA Freedom Act? The NSA is not spying on us anymore. Isn't that what they've told us? They're not, they're not hacking into Google and, and Yahoo and Microsoft and the rest of them without them knowing it anymore. No, no. They have to ask permission now. That's at the USA Freedom. I think it was Ron Paul that said, and he's right, <laughs> whenever the U.S. government says they reform something, you need to be suspicious. Because <laughs> it usually gets worse. And that's the case here. Uh, all of the information connected from the NSA domestic surveillance program on us, 1.5 billion bits of information a year, our cell phone use, our computers, our telephones, our texts, our smart TVs, anything digital on us with impunity on all of us was collected. And it was stored in what's called the Utah Data Center. There's so much data there, they had to create a new name called Yodobytes. It is so huge. They went by Giga and Terra and all the rest, and they had nothing left. So they came up with Yodobytes. That's enough bits and bytes to fill the state of Delaware and uh, Rhode Island full of bits and bytes to fill the entire state. That's how much data is in the U Utah Data Center from all the collection on you, me, our neighbors, and everyone else. Huge, massive. They have exclusive authority on mass Americans. We've talked about that. The FISA court is a Supreme Court that secretly allows the, the uh, surveillance of US citizens without the knowledge of Congress. They've got their own secret court, secret Supreme Court. And they've just been given new cybersecurity authority. So if there's any cybersecurity issues with any Americans, they can now spy on you. Is cybersecurity a huge thing that impacts all of us now? with viruses and Trojan horses and all this other stuff. So if it's a cybersecurity problem, they now can, can get into our stuff. So they just redid the authority under a different name. And I'll show you something else. This is the Black Chamber. The original NSA surveillance office was fine, created fine, uh, trying to gather information on, on our enemies during war. That's, that's perfectly fine, perfectly constitutional. But this is what it's grown to be. It's a global surveillance massive complex, massive. And I'll show you some things they did to, anybody heard of William Binney? NSA whistleblower, I'll we'll talk about him in a little bit. Um, good man. Uh, this is the Utah Data Center in Utah, storing the autobytes of information. This is where all of our information out in Utah in the NSA uh, Data Center is being stored on all of us. The information is so huge, the cooling systems for the computers are the size of a warehouse just to cool the computers down for information on us. Constitutional issue there, maybe? Yeah, maybe. And, of course, they're shielded by the state secrets privilege. Several people took the NSA to court over the NSA domestic spying program, wanted it to go to court under the Fourth Amendment. So what the NSA did was, yeah, sorry, state secrets privilege, case sealed, it's over. Uh, we have that authority. You'll never see it. Gone. Close the cases down. Just like that. They've got that power. So this is what the NSA has done recently. I don't know if you know about this or not. They have... Uh, began a program called Traffic Shaping to get around the, the NSA Freedom, Freedom Act, or the USA Freedom Act. You know what Traffic Shaping is? What they're doing is they're all the internet traffic that they're collecting on us, they're not storing it locally. The old stuff is still on the Utah Data Center forever, but the new stuff, they're not storing it in the United States anymore. They're storing it overseas. They're still collecting it on us, but they're storing it in overseas databases. It's called Traffic Shaping. Kind of a serpent-like term, but they're shaping the traffic. Still collecting, but they're sending it overseas and still storing it. 
arsenal of surveillance programs. Lockheed Martin and other military industrial complexes are doing that on their behalf for multi-billion dollar contracts. And now they are starting to use the new voice print uh, technology, what is it, Alexa and the other things, and your cell phone. The NSA is now able to pick up your voice when you're talking, not just from your cell phone, from other things. And now on the database they have your voice, not just your data. This is an NSA dream come true. Uh, voice print technology, they've got our voices now, not just our data. Uh, chilling. We're, we're not just surveilled by the government now, we're surveilled by our own corporations that have multi-million dollar contracts with the government and are bound by secrecy oaths and can never talk about what they did. Even if they feel guilty after they retire, mm -mm. Think they want to go to prison? Risk their life, their finances? No, of course not. Nobody, no one's going to talk. It's personal destruction. Corporate tracking and browsing, even Facebook and everybody else. On top of all of this, the NSA is gathering the information that Facebook and the other companies are collecting on what we buy, purchase, and all of, the, all of those trends. Uh, Amazon, for example, and their, their uh, contract with the CIA to monitor the cloud. That's what, the, that's what Amazon and the CIA are doing with that contract, is monitoring the cloud. So the corporations are even handing over our behavioral information from what we buy to the CIA and the NSA. I mean, they're like, we're done as far as privacy goes. They're turning up the police into the extension of the, of the NSA. NSA has been caught disseminating domestic surveillance information to uh, state police and, and the DEA, which is illegal, so that they can go out and, and uh, this guy with license plates such and such, he's got a bag of coke in his back seat, came from the NSA to the police. That ought to make the hair on the back, uh, back of your neck stand up. So they've been doing that. All global electronic traffic is what the NSA has access to. That's why our allies are so mad at us, is that we're, we're picking up their stuff, from, also from their leaders. Now, everybody spies on everybody else. I know coming from that world, friends spy on friends, enemies spy on friends, everybody spies on everybody. Uh, but when you take it to an extreme like this, uh, it starts getting out of hand. And uh, it has not made us real popular, even with, even with our allies. All right, <clears throat> shift gears a little bit. Remember I talked about the creation of the Federal Reserve, and we'll keep moving because uh, this, is, this is being taped. I talked about the creation of the Federal Reserve. Now we all hear about that. Uh, Rand Paul, and I'm, I'm a big fan of Rand Paul, by the way. I think he's probably one of the only constitutional senators left. Some guy just attacked him, I guess broke five of his ribs or something. Uh, strange, but uh, Rand Paul and his, and his dad, Ron, have been calling this for years. And they've trying to make, they're trying to make Ron Paul look like your crazy old grandpa from the attic because he's, he's been after uh, the Federal Reserve since for his entire career, he's never changed. The Federal Reserve, I want you to understand what the Federal Reserve is, and you'll never look at the Federal Reserve the same again. Uh, it is the engine of the deep state. You could call it an economic shadow government, easily, because it runs our economic government, and it's international, no doubt. It was started by a secret society of elite bankers I mentioned, a globalism through the CFR, primarily the House of Morgan connected to the House of Rothschild with a lot of very deep occult connections and occult societies and occult practices. Um, just, a, just a fact. Uh, global economy, the CFR, along with the Federal Reserve, the goal it was and still is a global economy. They want a global economy. A uh, world order economy, you can call it the new world order if you want, you can call it the international order if you want, but they do have now a global world economy that's being run through the Federal Reserve and is controlling our economy right now, and that's been going on since 1913. World's leading international banks, Morgan, Rockefeller, Rothschild, War Warburg, are behind our Federal, our Federal Reserve. They're behind that. Their banks are behind that. There are 15 branches of the Federal Reserve, and each branch is an international bank outside the United States that is controlling the U.S. economy. Complete control over our economy and freedom. The chairman of the Federal Reserve is appointed by the president, but it's meaningless because it's not a federal agency. But it makes it look legitimate like it is a federal agency. The chairman of the Federal Reserve is a figurehead appointed to make it look like it's legitimate. The real head of... The Federal Reserve is the director in New York that does this in secret behind the scenes. Janet Yellen and, and others that are the figureheads are not the ones that run the show. It's the director in New York who really does it in secret. It is not a government agency. The Federal Reserve is not a branch of the federal government. It is a private bank, internationally connected private bank. Twelve branches, directors from international banks, I mentioned that. There are no reserves in the Federal Reserve. There's, not, there's no reserves in there. This is, this is money laundering coming from international banks into the U.S. economy. 
So it's not even a reserve. It's a fake name. Uh, these international bankers have no loyalty to the U.S., the U.S. sovereignty or the government or anything else. They have loyalty to their national banks, to their country, and yet they're printing our money. They're loaning, they're loaning loans to our major corporations or holding those loans back so the corporations go down. These are federal banks doing, or international banks doing this to our federal government. Deliberates in secret. What did I say about secret before, secrecy before? This is the shadow government economic system. Their deliberations are in secret. Their members are in secret. Their budget decisions are in secret. They cannot be audited because all, all of their accounting is secret. What happens when things are secret? Something, something's, something's wrong with that picture. They can't even be audited. Con Congress has no access to what the Federal Reserve is doing. None. And no oversight whatsoever. And never has since 1913. They have total control over the U.S. economy. Now just think about that. A private secret bank that does everything in secret that is run by international banks has full control over our, our economy. Full control. They have the power to manufacture currency, quantitative easing. You remember that? Just printing money like, like uh, monopoly money just out of the blue with nothing to back it up, a.k.a. $20 trillion in debt. They can manipulate interest rates on all of our loans, house, car, student loans, and everything else. The Federal Reserve can manipulate those any way they want, and it's not a U.S. government agency. Decides the entire economic condition of the United States. Unilaterally determines the value of the dollar. The, the Federal Reserve, if, if it wanted to, could crash our economy just by simply devaluing the dollar. And it has the unilateral, it is solely can do that all by itself. Adjust the value of the dollar up and down, which would do whatever it wants to the U.S. economy globally. It's responsible for the creation and, immolation, uh, and elimination of corporations. It can lend money to a corporation or it can withhold money from a U.S. corporation, either create it or destroy it. And it's not a U.S. organization. Eliminates the freedom of the United States through financial control. Controls our purchases of our houses, our cars, our employment, our investments, our 401ks. The interest on our 401ks and everything else is controlled by the Federal Reserve. A non-U.S. entity. It's insane. So who's, our, who's the constitutional authority, or at least should be, not, not over the Federal Reserve, but who, who, who is the, the people's voice in Washington? Who's the, the authority, the constitutional authority in Washington? It's Congress, isn't it? It's our voice. It was set up so the people have control over Washington, D.C. through the Congress. So if you're the shadow government or the deep state and you want to control America, who are you going to go after? Who do you want to control the most? Congress. President, secondary, as far as they're concerned. That's a seat that's filled every 48 years. They have, they have, they have an easy way of manipulating that, at least until now. <laughs> Congress. This is what the, what the Constitution says. Represents the people. It is our sole constitutional representative. Creates laws and legislation, right? Controls the entire budget, has the, the budget power of the United States, the, the power of the purse, they call it. They can, they can create or stop a federal agency by defunding it, supposedly, except for one. Guess which one that is? The CIA. They cannot control the CIA's budget, although they control everybody else. That is their constitutional authority. They have oversight of federal agencies, except for one that hides everything. No control over that. But that's constitutionally, that's the authority that they're supposed to have. They're supposed to help us, the constituents, so they, they'll promise us we're going to make your economic situation better, we're going to create more jobs, and then they go to Washington, and, and what happens? They change, right? With some good exceptions, a few, they change. They're supposed to educate the public constitutionally. That's one of their roles. They're supposed to educate us on government and what the government is doing. Now, there's a large part of the government that they can't educate us on, isn't there? It's called the shadow government. Um, it's one of the reasons your meek and humble correspondent is standing up here tonight, is, is, to, tr is to try to do that. Okay? So, Congress is the people's only voice. So Congress has the legal authority to control the CIA through its budget, the constitutional authority, right? It's got that, except for one thing. The CIA classifies and withholds all the documents necessary for Congress to do that. Paralyzes it completely. It is a rogue, out of control, unconstitutional, massive agency that Congress cannot control and was created without Congress. It's unconstitutional, flat out. So while we have the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence and the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, and they provide oversight to the CIA, so we do have oversight. I was in there, and I know of accounts of entire closets filled with documents 
from the intelligence community that the oversight committees were supposed to be investigating that hadn't been touched for a year, just thrown in the closet and piled up. Oversight committees are made up typically of four to five interns who have no experience in intelligence whatsoever, and I think they rotate out on the average every six months before they bring a new one in with no experience whatsoever. And the oversight people on the oversight committees, they are not appointed to the intelligence committees because they have an intelligence background experience. Did you know that? They're appointed by their ability to raise contributions for their party, Republican or Democrat. They get the seat based on that only, not on any intelligence background. I think the House Ways and Means Committee, I think they have to pay $100,000 to get a seat on that committee. They're, they're appointed by paying a fee to sit there. Yeah, that's how corrupt it's gotten. So uh, if you were a congressman or a senator, would you dig way down into the CIA uh, at the expense of your entire career, certainly your reelection, and perhaps even your personal life? Heck no. You think they're going to do that? No, no way. No, it's not going to happen. Not if they want to survive. The lobbyists, the MIC lobbyists uh, control Congress and senators. I think we, we proved that one. There's a revolving door from the Congress to the military industrial complex. If you play the game right with the military industrial complex and you legislate in their favor, Mr. and Mrs. Congressman, when you leave office uh, after about a year, we'll bring you over on our board and you make a few million bucks a year, uh, AKA enter James Comey. James Comey left government service, went with Lockheed Martin. Guess how much he was making a year? Six million dollars a year. That's what they paid him. And then he rotates back in and clears Hillary Clinton of uh, espionage. Um, uh, so can you see how the things work? Sadly, Congress is now composed of statesmen. We don't have constitutional representatives, with a couple of exceptions. My humble opinion, maybe Rand Paul. Generally, Congress is composed not of constitutionalists, but statesmen and stateswomen. They have no intention of changing anything in Washington. They're careerists. They want to get reelected. They want to make speeches. Uh, and they want to stay in office as long as they can. They are not going to make any changes. They're not. They are statesmen. They are not constitutionalists. I mentioned this, and, and let me do a little sideline here. When I wrote my book, Sweetheart is 20, 2012, I think is when it came out. Uh, I decided to take quite a bit of risk because I had seen this uh, to an extreme and come out and write from the company of shadows. And decided, okay, I'm going to go uh, to the press and I'm going to say we've got a constitutional problem here. Uh, there's this shadow government is controlling Congress. So I called the Washington Post up, talked to the reporter. Oh my gosh, what a story. I'm like, duh. <laughs> what a story. I'll, I'll, I'll get right back to you. Washington Post, and I think it, it was his editor, I think more than him. I don't, I don't want to down him too much. I know who his editor was, but the Post took my story and went straight to the CIA and reported it. Reported everything that I told him and then sat on it for a month, going back and forth and, and just lying calling back and saying, well, exactly what was that classified operation that you were involved in back then? I'm like, what are you, what are you doing, dude? You, are you trying to, you're either trying to trap me or you're trying to, you know, and it became pretty obvious over about 30 days. So I called the New York Times and they had the story out the next morning. And, and it, you can see it was the front page of the New York Times and the Washington Post pu published one on the front page. And it's just, just a fragment of what happened. But the point is, they went, the, the Post went directly to the CIA and reported. And the Post is still doing that sort of thing. Uh, Operation Mockingbird. Matrix of Influence. See Operation Mockingbird. They pay, paid journalists ended in 1976. Remember I mentioned that? It is now a voluntary program. And this is how they do it. The CIA runs what you call a quid pro quo. You scratch my back, I'll scratch your back, and that's the way the system works. Well, what the CIA does with the Post, New York Times, and others, and says, oh, I know, because I've seen this. All right, I'll tell you what, we'll give you uh, uh, sources, and whenever they, an anonymous source, whenever it's, it's the CIA. So New York Times says anonymous source, you know it came from the CIA, automatically. So we'll, we'll give you this information about uh, Syria. You can publish that as long as you publish no nothing negative about the CIA, because as soon as you do, we cut off the spigot. And they're like, okay, all right, you just keep giving us information, we'll sell papers, and that's how they're doing it. That's how the CIA is manipulating the press. No doubt about it. I've seen it personally. The Pentagon had, had uh, the uh, journalists got a Pulitzer Prize for this. The Pentagon had a mockingbird program where they were paying, I know a couple of them, they were paying generals to go out on, in the news media and try to make it look like the war in Iraq was uh, valid. And it was, it was a whole disinformation propaganda campaign that this journalist uncovered, got a Pulitzer Prize, and it was a Pentagon mockingbird operation. There are six corporations we now know that own most of the media, and I'll show you here in a little bit that those corporations, the editors are tied in with the CIA and they have a, they have a relationship going on still today, now. 
And uh, uh, a lot of globalist funding from George Soros especially is going into papers and they're, and, and they're funding a lot of these papers and how do you think that's going to influence their reporting. And of course, the journalists down at the bottom, do you think that they're going to go against their editor who's talking directly with the CIA in this case uh, and, and risk complete abject destruction of their career? No, of course not. They're not going to do it. With, with, with uh, I think one, one lady just came out recently um, Cheryl Atkinson wrote a book, which I recommend you read, had the, the guts, bless her heart, to come out and wrote a book right on, man. They even, they even hacked into her computer, been there, and, and I think she got them. So, awesome. So there are good people out there. Editors have an unwritten agreement with the CIA today. That's going on today. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in my case. It's happened in multiple cases. The CIA's management network is connected to the major news outlets. That's why you will not see anyone, and I have to include every network in this, CNN, CBS, ABC, and Fox News. You will not hear them dig down into anything with the CIA, will you? No offense to, to Bill O'Reilly at all, but I don't think in, in 12 years I heard him say one thing negative about the CIA ever, him or some of the or co other correspondents. I'm not pounding on Bill. This relationship is there. They are not going to dig. Because to do so, uh, it's going to be at the expense of their paper. This is, uh, I'd, rec I'd highly recommend you read Douglas Valentine's book. I don't, I'm not getting anything personal out of this. It's just a good book. It's called The CIA and Organized Crime. <laughs> read it sitting down. <laughs> I've read it. I can tell you he nails it. This is a quote from, from Douglas Valentine. This network of co cooperation pressures, uh, press the CIA exerts on the media equals political warfare against the American public. Absolutely true. The CIA, going all the way back to the CFR, is manipulating our national news media. And you wonder why they're not reporting on bad things they're doing in Syria. The massacring of the Christian village. The sarin gas attack that the Free Syrian Army did in Syria. Everybody wonders, why aren't they reporting on that? Well, this is why. Now you know. I re read the book. It's awesome. Uh, he also calls it a CIA domestic counter subversion operation that's going on today, and he is right. That's why everybody has a gut feeling that they are not being told the full story by the mainstream media, because they're not. And then we have organizations that are actually getting the story and the truth out there, and those are, those are the, we have one sitting right here, those are the heroes of today that are, that are taking the risk and doing the digging to get the information to the people. Thank God for the internet, uh, maybe the last bastion of freedom of the press, the credible ones. The, you know, you got to make sure, triple verify that they're credible, but they're out there. Okay, the CIA has its own public relations office. What do you think their job is? To go to Hollywood and to go to the press and make sure that they're only reporting favorably on what the CIA is doing. Maybe, remember the movie Argo, getting the hostages out of Iran? It was a crock. It was all propaganda. It was, that, that didn't happen that way. Just made the CIA look really tough. The CIA actually consulted on that film, and it's a good film, very good film. Good acting, but it's baloney. Um, Zero Dark Thirty, uh, the CIA had a hand in that one, and I think they actually uh, gave them some classified information in that movie to try to make the CIA look really good. So they have a public affairs office that actually does that. It's connected to Hollywood to make sure that they make movies uh, the right way. Media blackout of criminal behavior, you, you do, and I've said this a few times, I'll say it again, you do not see the CIA, excuse me, you do not see the mainstream media reporting on some of these dark CIA operations. It's absent, isn't it? It's not there. You've got this unconstitutional dark organization that's engaging in violations of the Constitution and the press will not report on it at all? I mean, it, something's going on, and I think, I, I think we know what that is. Uh, it's crazy. The media is the fourth branch of government. They're supposed to be telling us the truth and what is going, but they're not. I mean, they're bought, sold, and paid for. We also know now that these editors are taking money from billionaires who have direct uh, connections to CI-linked think tanks and, and uh, funding organizations. So billions of dollars indirectly is going through the CI into the national news media uh, and, and uh, to the assistance of some of these editors. Mockingbird is alive. I mentioned my book, From the Company of Shadows, thinking that uh, the press would a was actually going to be interested in a story about CIA corruption. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> See, I didn't know all this back then. This caused me, that caused me to start digging and find this stuff out. Uh, uh, that's why you don't see whistleblowers coming out. And I'll show you more here in a moment. That's why whistleblowers don't come out. The press is gone. There is a, there is a, a, a 
perfected system of personal destruction where they will take you out if you try it. But sadly, the news media is compliant. So the national media is compliant with CIA censor and propaganda today. Is, is that chilling? Big time. So the, the, the popular thing out there now as well, you know, the, this deep state, these are Obama holdovers from the Obama administration, John Brennan and others that are leaking information to the press. They're holdovers from Obama, and they're not part of the rest of the government. Uh, that's a sham. Brennan goes all the way back as chief of station in Saudi Arabia under the Bush, Clinton, and both Bush administrations. He's been a shadow government operative for over almost 30 years. He's not an Obama plant. We need to understand that. This is not a partisan Republican or Democrat issue. This is a constitutional issue. For example, Clinton uh, and the Bush senior uh, were engaged in the Iran-Contra affair, affair the, the destruction of, of evidence, illegal provision of arms to Iran, and running drug money. Okay, that is a Democrat and a Republican. And you notice how they're all buddy-buddy now? They're hugging each other and loving on each other. It's because they got the goods on each other. They know exactly what they did back then. And even though they're supposed to be arch enemies, they're best buds, man. George W. Bush, Iraq, NSA surveillance, torture, secret prison, prisons, warrantless wiretapping. Barack Obama prosecuted more leakers than any other president in history, including John, my friend John Kiriakou, prosecuted by Barack Obama. Uh, he expanded the NSA surveillance program and allowed all 17 intelligence agencies to have access to NSA surveillance results. I think he did that his uh, second week before he left, left office. Massively expanded the NSA surveillance powers. It's a democratic administration. And of course, Syria, free Syrian army, and eventually uh, popped into ISIS. Hillary Clinton. Saudi Arabia ran guns in through, into Benghazi through Saudi Arabia and Qatar as a cutout in a secret operation to arm the Free Syrian Army. Democrat, not a Republican, not an Obama. Uh, uh, she was doing that as Secretary of the State. Uh, she was directly connected to Wall Street and the military industrial complex. We're finding out now. She was making 500,000 bucks a speech, I think, to them. She was working under the Obama administration, a Democratic administration. She uh, was running guns, secretly running guns. Remember Iran-Contra under Republican in, in administration? Now we're doing it under a Democratic administration. Same old, same old. Congress, Republicans and Democrats, they promise their voters one thing, and what do they do when they get to Congress? They support shadow government, deep state wars, secret operations, and approval of government surveillance. Do you know that Congress was aware of the NSA domestic surveillance program? The Gang of Eight approved it. Congress is aware of the Free Syrian Army. Many of them approve. This is Congress, our representatives, Democrats and Republicans. Shadow government is, has, doesn't care about political parties at all. Not at all. It's pan-administration, pan-party. So uh, let's look at control of congressional hearings, constitutional violations. And, and again, getting back to what I said in the beginning, a violation of the Constitution is what? It's a felony, right? So I want to go through some of the, the, the constitutional violations that the U.S. government has done down through the years up until now. Constitutional violations by the shadow government, a.k.a. the U.S. government. Control of congressional hearings, withholding documents and testimony. Blocking Congress from covert programs. Classifying and concealing illegal operations, running drugs to pay for these things. Establishing covert funding from illegal activity, Operation Gladio. Surveillance of the Congress and the Senate, if we could imagine that. The NSA surveilled Congress and its discussions with Israel. Actually tapped into their phone calls on Capitol Hill. Control of the judiciary, the FISA court and the state secrets privilege, use of our tax dollars with no approval, surveillance of the U.S. citizen, violation of the Fourth Amendment, all constitutional violations, all felonies. Officials lying under oath, the DNI, the CIA, NSA, all those officials have lied to Congress under oath, and I've got examples of every single one of those. Secret operations involving human rights violations, Augusto Pinochet and the death squads, MK Ultra, the dragging of U.S. citizens without their knowledge, on and on it goes. Silencing whistleblowers. Uh, most people don't know that if you work for the intelligence, uh, any intelligence organization, when you sign the, the form for employment, you give up your constitutional right to trial. Now, those of you listening to me now that are working in the intelligence community, you probably didn't know that, did you? You have no right to trial. You don't know that, but you sign that away when you join up. So if you think you're going to take uh, the NSA, the CIA, to trial with your constitutional rights, not going to happen. You gave those rights up without you knowing it. Secret prisons, rendition, torture, the NDA, indefinite detention of Americans. Everybody knows about that. If the government, if there's a national state of emergency, they can round up anybody they want with no habeas corpus, no probable cause, no trial, lock them up, deny access to an attorney, their family, or anyone else. They have that authority right now. And I don't know if you know it, 
But based on the war on terror, uh, an intentional choice of words, we are still in a continual state of emergency after 9-11, which based on continuity of government, they can suspend the Constitution at any time right now. Because they have, and uh, Obama extended it, and Trump is working on it. We'll see if the, if the shadow government gets to him or not. But if they st extend that, they can suspend the Constitution in the war on terrorism at any time. As it stands right now, they can do that. National security letters with the FBI under Robert Mueller can go into your employment if they decide that you're a terrorist. Now, their definition of terrorist, if you, if you examine it, includes uh, Greenpeace, the NRA, and other groups that they consider possibly uh, um, subversive by their own definition. So their definition of terrorist includes maybe some of us in this room here, depending on whether you're a Greenpeace member or NRA member. That's their definition of terrorism. Very, very broad. So they can walk into your place of employment with national security letters, and they can go to your supervisor, and they can say, FBI, national security letter, we want, it. We want you to give us all of the employment information, financial information on uh, Betty Jordan, all the files, hand them over to us, and if you tell Betty we were here, you're going to jail, you're going to prison. There's a statute that after 9-11 that says they can come into your place of business, access all your files, and if your coworkers or supervisors tell you, they will arrest them and take your supervisor to prison under the national security letters. Then, of course, you have the warrantless searches. They can break into an American's house without probable cause, violation of the Fourth Amendment, search through all your records and files, and leave without you knowing it. Biggest violation of the Fourth Amendment in U.S. history. Robert Mueller, special prosecutor, oversaw these programs. Drone assassination program, there's a presidential kill list. On the average, there's 100 people on that list, and they, they have meetings where the president goes down and goes, uh, that one. And they'll pick which, which person they're going to drone next. Problem with that is collateral damage. They just killed 34 innocent people, I think, last week. Uh, there was a military strike. Uh, so they will, pick, they will pick a target based on behavior now. And they will take out that target and anybody around that target. No wonder, no wonder the world's mad at us. 9-11, uh, as I mentioned, we are in a continual state of emergency to cut through continuity of government. They can suspend our Constitution and engage in indefinite uh, detention if... if uh, if they think it gets to that point. Constitutional violations, huge. So what is, how does a shadow government do it? And, well, what they do is they reward the faithful. See, if you stay faithful and you don't rock the boat at all, then they'll reward you for doing this. This is George W. Bush awarding George Tenet the Presidential Medal of Freedom after George Tenet did this, provide falsified intelligence leading to the Iraq War, biggest military, military mistake in U.S. history, being taught that way at the war colleges. Gives them a medal. Tenet also withheld critical information prior to and after the 9-11 attack and obstructed justice. He, he engaged in and manages and supervised the torture, rendition, and secret prison program. George Tenet did that. And he invoked the state's secret privilege to seal cases against the CIA more than any other CIA director in history. So does he get in trouble for it? Is he indicted for it? Maybe not appointed to another position? No, he's rewarded. Guess who his chief of staff was while he was doing all of this? None other than John Brennan, who was later rewarded as, guess what? The director of the CIA, who continued the torture program, the drone program. He spied on the Senate and invoked the state secret privilege. See how it works? That change just keeps going on and on. No one ever gets indicted or arrested. You see these wonderful congressional hearings with Trey Gowdy, who's an awesome orator, and uh, Jason Chavitz, when he was there, pounding on these people, suitable for framing what they were saying. But did anything happen? No, nothing. They presented a beautiful case, and then nothing happens. That's the way it works. Lying under oath before Congress. Let me give you some examples. Lying under oath before Congress. These are government officials lying under oath and getting away with it, not even being charged with anything. James Clapper denied the domestic surveillance program. Remember that film? Uh, and, and it was Ron Wyden who just was just cooking him like a piece of bacon. Uh, no, I'm asking you, uh, how has the NSA spied on U.S. citizens? And, and Clapper, I, I'm a behavior now, so my master's degree is in forensic psychophysiology. That's a big word for detection of deception. <laughs> and uh, the director of national intelligence was not aware of his body language at all. I don't know if you've seen the tape, but are you spying on American citizens? <laughs> uh, no. I'm asking you again. That's because all the nerves in your face are firing. I'm asking you again, are you spying on American citizens? Oh, not wittingly, he says. <laughs> Lies under oath. 
and it does a terrible job of it. He's not even good at it. John Brennan uh, denied, no, we didn't spy on the Senate. No, no, we never did that until they caught him. Oh, yes, you did. We got the, the IP address trail right here. It was you. Well, oh, okay, I guess we did. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize, he says. General Keith Alexander, uh, General Alexander, director of the NSA, um, you, you've been spying on the American people um, to a huge extent. How many terrorist attacks have you stopped through that surveillance? Well, 50, at least 50 times. Congress being, I think it was Ron Widening, I think, being smart. Okay, go back and get us those cases and come back. We'll reconvene and I want you to show us those 50 cases. He comes back. Well, we couldn't find them. What do you mean you couldn't find them? Well, they're kind of hard to track down. Um, okay, well, how many cases did you find? Uh, maybe uh, well, uh, there was about four. Okay, go back and get those four and bring them back to us. And comes back and goes, well, uh, couldn't really find those either. Uh, uh, okay, uh, but you missed the Boston bombing, didn't you? Well, well I guess so, yeah. So uh, they could not provide one case where the NSA domestic surveillance program had caught a terrorist attack. Not one. And yet he said originally there were 50 until they caught him under oath. FBI Director Robert Mueller denied using extensive warrantless searches. Uh, and this is, you've got to watch this one. Director Mueller, how many times has the FBI entered an American's house illegally? Oh, uh, to my knowledge, I think there's... Uh, I think he said 47 times in terrorist investigations. Okay, well, let's reconvene. And some really smart congressional staffer went out there and did some digging, probably talked to some FBI agents, came back and said, uh, okay, let's ask you that question again, uh, Mr. Mueller, because we got evidence here that you did it 2,000 times. Okay, 2,000 times, he says. Uh, 2,000 times. Yeah, that's right. Uh, sorry about that. Sorry right, I lied under oath, but 2,000 times. Okay, I'll go with that. So they go out and they do some more digging, and, and they found out it was at least 4,000 times they'd broken into people's houses. So they get him back on the hot seat. you got to watch this. And, and he's like, uh, okay, uh, Director Mueller, you said 2,000 times. Yeah, that's right, 2,000. Well, we, we have evidence that it's actually at least 4,000. Oh, okay, well, that's probably more accurate. It's probably, probably 4,000. So they said, uh, uh, Director Mueller, tell us, please exactly how many times the NSA has entered an American's home without a warrant. And if you can believe it, what he said was, uh, I don't really remember. And they let it go. Yeah, I mean, you gotta watch it. You, you stop the tape and it's like, what? Uh, and and they, just, they just dropped it. You, you're the FBI director, you're breaking into an American's house without a warrant, and you don't remember how many times you did it. Uh, that's called lying, maybe, under oath. Anyway, I mean, it gets ridiculous, but they get away with it. Why? Because of the system. Secretary of, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton denied the orders to reduce Benghazi's security, amongst other things, said she did not do that. She did not sign off on that until they found an affidavit demanding security be re reduced with her signature on it. Uh, she did do it. Lied under oath. Anything happened to her? Perjury? Charges? Anything? No. No. And this is not a partisan thing. This is a shadow government thing. They get away with it. Attorney General Eric Holder caught spying on American journalists, spying on reporters. They, and he was actually held in contempt of Congress. So, Attorney General, did you spy on James Rosen and did you spy on these other 100 uh, AP journalists? No, I never, no I never, I'd never sign off on anything like that. Oh yeah, what about this affidavit with your signature on the bottom approving that to happen? I'm not talking any further. And they cited him with con contempt of Congress. Lied like a chihuahua under oath and, and with no repercussions at all. Uh, incredible. But the shadow government protects its own. So uh, Dana Priest and, and William Arkin did an incredible stu stu uh, uh, study in their book. I think it's called Top Secret Amer America. They said this, the top secret world of the government created in response to the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001 has become so large, so unwieldy, and so secretive that no one knows how much money it costs, how many people it employs, how many programs exist within it, or exact how many agencies do the same work. Not even Congress knows the size and extent of the shadow government because it's created outside of Congress, obviously. They, they have no idea what, what this thing is doing. It's a separate secret government that operates outside the Constitution and that should cause everybody to pause right there. Secret government that operates outside the Constitution. Have we created a monster? We didn't create it, but we let it be created. Have they created a monster? Yeah, it is a raving, massive monster. I call it the tyranny of secrecy, and this is how the uh, shadow government uses secrecy to circumvent the U.S. Constitution and control Congress and the president and the judiciary. 
This is how they do it. I call it the tyranny of secrecy. You remember this? John F. Kennedy, perhaps the first whistleblower, maybe. I don't know what you call him that. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. I cannot agree with that more, having seen what I've seen. And, the very, and, and he goes on, and there is a very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment, which is what we are seeing today, living. And he said this, I will splinter the CIA into a thousand pieces and scatter it to the winds because they lied to him, provided false information, the Bay of Pigs operation and others, things he was not told about. Uh, he and Bobby had access to mafia files where the CIA was working directly with the mafia and they were about to bust, he and Bobby were about to bust the CIA's connection to the mafia. And the CIA was not very happy with him. Alan Dulles was the director at the time uh, that Kennedy was doing these things, made this threat. Kennedy was assassinated, and they put Alan Dulles in charge of the Warren Commission investigation of the assassination, putting the fo fox in charge of the hen house. Where did this all start in terms of government power of secrets? We have people from the Waycross area. The state secrets privilege, remember I mentioned that? Go complete impunity to shut down any case against the shadow government, CIA, NSA, started here. Waycross, Georgia, not too far from here. Uh, and there is the actual site with this, with it, where this occurred, and I always encourage people to visit it because it's very, it's very heart-wrenching to go there. An Air Force B-29 1948 bomber crashed in Waycross, Georgia. The widows, there were, there were four RCA engineers on board that were killed in the crash. They drove the plane right into a farm, nose first into the ground. Huge, huge super fortress bomber. Uh, the RCA, RCA engineers were killed. Their widows went to the Air Force, as any widow would, and demanded to, to know how their, how their husbands died, what killed them, and how did my husband die? Well, the Air Force told them the usual excuse, well, we can't tell you how your husbands died because it's classified. Now, whenever you hear this from now on, when the government says it can't tell you because it's classified, be suspicious. Well, we can't tell you that uh, because uh, the details are of the clash, crash are classified. So the widows filed suit in court for the crash report. Okay, if, if it's classified, then we want to see the crash report proved to us that this was, a, this was a result of a classified operation. So what the government did with impunity was this. They created the state secrets privilege, created it out of thin air, and the judiciary approved it. So using the state secrets privilege, they shut the widow's case down, sealed all the evidence in court, even from Congress, where it's sealed forever and can never be seen again. And that is where the state secrets privilege was created. Turns out, Judith Piatha uh, uh, Paya Lothar, or Judith Lothar Paya, I'm sorry, uh, was the daughter of one of the RCA engineers killed in the crash. I interviewed, she's in my book. It's a, it's a pretty stirring interview. She was denied uh, uh, information as to how her dad was killed in, in the accident, and she says herself how heartbroken she was that her own government would do this to her. And uh, she gave me an interview, and it was, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty concerning, heartbreaking. So Judith went out and did some searching, and she found what a heroine, hero, heroine, however you want to put it, she found the crash report on the internet, and it was unclassified completely. Just, she found, there it was. Uh, the, the, the Air Force had mistakenly put the crash report out on the internet, and there it is. Uh, it was, uh, I'll show it to you. And it, there it is. There's the actual crash report from the internet. Nothing in this document is classified at all. As a matter of fact, it shows gross negligence. Where the pilots overcompensated, an engine went out, they overcompensated. Uh, I think they'd only, they had four days of training before they got on the mission to fly, overcompensated and drove that super fortress right into the ground and killed these guys. Com gross negligence. There was nothing classified at all about that, and yet they created the state secrets privilege to shut it down. And this case is still sealed to this day, despite this knowledge. It's incredible. There's uh, Judy's mom, uh, whose, whose husband was killed in the crash, picture of her. So, the point here, with this single thing, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend you go and look at the plaque in Waycross, Georgia. Uh, Judy made a beautiful plaque and she gets into how the, the state secret privilege was created and how tyrannical it is, beautifully worded thing. I recommend you go there. It's the actual site where government secrecy began in terms of, of its tyrannical uh, version. The most tyrannical power of the U.S. government is based on a lie, something that didn't happen and something that was not classified. And now the CIA and the NSA use this to shut down cases against their unconstitutional activity with impunity. Incredible. You can't sue the NSA for spying on you now 
because of the state secrets privilege, which, which was created based on a lie and the death of three innocent people, uh, involving, also involving their widows. All right, so the shadow government controls Congress, manipulates con congressional hearings. We've seen a lot of that. It withholds, withholds clearances from congressmen and senators. We want to know what's going on in Syria and, and, and uh, how you're arming the Free Syrian Army. Well, Congressman Fred Mertz, uh, sorry, but you just don't have the, the clearances to have access to that information. Uh, and if you try to get that information, it's a violation of national security. And you, at the very least, you'll, be, you'll lose your seat in Congress, so I wouldn't go there. That's one way they do it. They classify documents to conceal illegal activity. If you want to conceal it, you classify it. They classified things in my book, uh, illnesses. Uh, my my uh, family and son were poisoned. There were doctor's diagnosis of that, of that toxic exposure, and they classified it. It's not classified about that at all. Now, it's illegal for them to do that based on executive order, but they don't care. So they'll classify it to conceal it from Congress. Classified bu budget information. They classify all the information necessary to uh, rule the CI. Classified. Congress has no access to it. Block congressional scrutiny using the state secrets privilege. They actually control the White House. They blindfold the president. Uh, he is not aware of some of these operations. And some presidents in the past have not wanted to be aware <laughs> of these operations. But a lot of the things that the CIA does, they don't tell the president they're doing them. Been there. They don't tell them or Congress that they're doing it. Major constitutional problem, but that's what they do because they've got the power to do it. They manipulate the president. Remember false intelligence given to George W. Bush uh, caused him to make the decision to go to war in Iraq based on false intelligence manipulated by the CIA and given to a president, caused one of the worst wars in our, in our history and destabilized the entire Middle East. They can influence a president's reelection. They can put so much president, remember, remember uh, Senator Schumer's statement? They can put so much pressure on a president that they can prevent him or her from being reelected based on how they work uh, things around the president, the Congress, the cabinet, and other things. Uh, Donald Trump right now is surrounded by shadow government operatives, and it's really concerning. There are members of his cabinet that are starting to manipulate him in ways that are concerning a lot of us. A lot of Federal Reserve, Goldman Sachs people are being appointed to high-level positions. Uh, it's getting kind of scary. It, it's up to, you know, you gotta, you gotta play carefully. Uh, that's one of the reasons they wanna get rid of him, but you know, they're having an effect. Control the judiciary, the, the secret Supreme Court uh, on behalf of the NSA and of course the state secrets privilege. So the shadow government, the point of this slide is the shadow government controls all three branches of our government. Who's running the show? They are. And it's a complex system they've been developing for over 60 years. So if you want to conceal some illegal activity, if you want to conceal the fact that uh, my family was poisoned and almost died, and when I filed all the evidence, it was all blacked out, you just classify it because you got the power. So if you want to conceal it, classify it. Congress goes to the CIA and they say, we demand that you give us all the information on the torture program. We demand it. We, we have authority over you, CIA. Of course, the CIA is like, yeah, right. But you give us that information. Well, then they destroy the torture tapes and they claimed, well, uh, we lost them. That's what they told them. We can't find them. We lost them after they destroyed them. So they said, all right. Give us the document. So finally the CIA said, okay, well, we always like to comply, so this is what they gave them. <laughs> that's what they give the Congress. You can't read a thing that's in there. We've complied now, we're not giving you anything else, they said. All right, so we had the, the NSA surveillance program after, the domestic, after Snowden blew the domestic surveillance program. Congress went and said, okay, NSA, we demand you give us the information on the NSA surveillance program. We're Congress, we're your bosses, you give that to us. And after some resistance, one invocation of the state secrets privilege, they finally said, okay, we'll comply, and this is what they gave him. Can you read anything in this document? No. And they, they actually can have the power to stand on this, so Congress can do nothing about it. They have to, this is what they received. They have no idea what they're doing. Legally, there's nothing they can do to get this information. All right, so let's go on. Fast and furious, you ran guns across the border into Mexico, which were used to kill civilians and at least one federal agent. We demand that you give us information on Fast and Furious. We're the Congress. Okay, we'll give, you, we'll give it to you. And there it is. That's the Fast and Furious document given to Daryl Issa when he was running the committee. Well, let's go on. 9-11, the most horrible event in U.S. history, maybe the world happened. They demanded the people did the 9-11 report um, because we all wanted to know what really happened on that day. So they gave it to him except for 28 pages, and there's the 28 pages. Hey, they complied. Uh, those 28 pages are still blacked out. 
A couple of congressmen have come out and said, look, I can't tell you exactly what's in there because they'll go to jail. But I can tell you it probably involves Saudi Arabia's in intelligence. And you can extrapolate that on to our connection with them. And all you can, I don't know how you can go. But that's what they got. That's how they do it. That's how the shadow government works. They actually control Congress by doing this, and no one can stop them. That's the chilling thing. No one can stop them from doing this. That's how the shadow government operates. That's its power. Now, in my case, <clears throat> I found an assassination vulnerability within the CIA uh, where foreign agents at, at just about any one of our, our embassies could identify our covert agents, their identity, and, and assassinate them potentially. Um, that's an investigation I did. I was threatened to drop it. My investigation was destroyed three times. It was destroyed from the headquarters server in the agency, and my th career was threatened to drop the investigation. More on that later. Why, why in the world would they do such a thing? So uh, I was put on a base managed by the CIA, CI officer who was rebuked by the Intelligence Committee for doing that, became my boss on a base where my family was, became gravely ill. They were poisoned badly. So my son almost died, so, so did my wife. So I fought them. <clears throat> I gathered all the evidence. I sent it to the Congressional Oversight Committees. I sent it to Washington. I sent it, sent it to the CIA. And what they did in return was they put me under a gag order. They issued a gag order. My attorneys told me uh, the evidence in your case is so strong that they can't drop your case. Uh, and they're concerned about what they're going to do. So they put me under a gag order. I couldn't talk to anybody about my family being poisoned or being sick, my house being broken into. Uh, we were bugged. We were followed um, because they didn't want this getting out that this has happened. So they put me on a gag order, and they, re they refused to let me see the gag order for two years. They told me it's too sensitive. Well, then what am I gagged by? Well, we can't tell you. It's too sensitive for even you to see what you're gagged by. We fought this for two years. After two years, remember the examples I just gave you? Okay, all right, we'll give you, we'll give you the, the gag order. And this is what it looked like. Do I still know what I'm gagged by? Uh, no. You know what you would call this? Um, oh, and, and, and they, they sealed my case. Sealed it so not even Congressman Frank Wolf, my Congress, could have access to all of the evidence and information. Sealed it permanently. State secrets privilege. Sealed it so no one could ever have access again. A family being poisoned, followed, house broken into. Mountains of evidence. Uh, case of entrapment. What they were trying to do was get me to say something that violated the gag order. I didn't even know what I was gagged by, a.k.a. like John Caracal, and then, then take me out of the picture because I was starting to blow the whistle. See how corrupt this stuff gets? Uh, it's that bad. It's actually worse. So what was my defining moment? I was a decorated CI officer. The CI was my life. I had awards, medals, uh, I, uh, I traveled overseas, I did a lot of things um, you know, that some, some, time, some guys dream about. I mean, I loved the agency until I, the higher I got up in the ranks, the more I started seeing how corrupt this beast was. And then you, gotta, you have a decision to make. Why would the CIA cover up the assassination vulnerability of its agents overseas? Why would the CIA not want to protect their, their agents in foreign countries from being killed? Why would they cover that up? Why would they threaten me and destroy the documents and then target me later on this base and my family is exposed to poisons? Why? The, uh, the people are still asking that today. Why would they do that? Unless there, maybe there's some people out there that if they want to take out a, a CI officer or a chief of station that they, they don't like, well, there's a way that they can do that, perhaps. It's the only theory that I've heard that is a possibility. But, that, but they did that. Uh, I was threatened. Documents that I wrote, I had a 15-page investigation, all detailed, right down to the IP address level, right down to every, every way you could get in and identify our agents and their assets, if you can imagine. All the documents were destroyed. So I had a decision to make. Um, and just personally, after a lot of thought, a lot of prayer, I decided I could, I could not let my fellow officers' safety be at such extensive risk out there. I mean, what, how can you do that? So uh, by, by simple prov providence, I came across a senior official outside the CIA uh, who found out about my investigation. I got a call on the secure line one day, uh, Kevin, this is Jim so-and-so. I read your investigation. Uh, I want you over at Maine State, seventh floor immediately. I'm like, sure, okay. So I went over there and he said, we read your stuff and uh, we think you're onto something here. Do not tell your bosses or the CIA anything about this. We're going to go out and we're going to do a global investigation. Take a few months. You'll probably get a call from us in a few months. You just lay low. 
So I went outside the CIA to a senior decorated government official, God and Patriot type, one of the, one of the, the good types, awesome guy. Uh, three months later, I get a, a call on the secure line. And the funny part is I just talked to my, a good friend of mine on the secure line. And we were talking. He goes, listen, I've got to go. Someone's coming in my office. I said, I said, okay, so I'll call you back in five minutes. So I hung up the phone. Five minutes later, the phone rings. And I think it's my friend. So I pick it up. And I said, Pizza Hut. And it was Jim C. He's like, Gavin, this is Jim C. over at Main State. I was like, another Homer Simpson. Oh, oh. Sorry, sir. I thought you were my buddy. But anyway, he goes, come over here immediately. So I went over and they sat me down and they pulled out their investigation. They said it's worse than even you thought. The foreign nationals, foreign intelligence officers, assassins, whatever, can go into just about any embassy in the world, identify our covert agents, and once they identify them, then they're basically theirs. Huge, massive vulnerability that your agency covered up. We're going to have a meeting in three days. The agency has ordered to be, to be, to be there. Will you come also? Well, yes, sir, of course. So I went to this big meeting, a big conference room, top level of state, three senior state officers, the CIA officer in charge of the cover-up sitting at one end, two of the state guys at the other end, Jim so-and-so here, and me across the table. Department of State officially proceed, proceeds to rebuke, officially rebuke the CIA for putting the lives of its agents at risk overseas for over 10 years, told them they should be ashamed of themselves, and they were going to publish these findings and what the CIA did to the entire intelligence community, which they did. So the entire intelligence community knew what the CIA did. Me? <laughs> I got a laser dot. You know, this is my boss sitting at the end of the table who wound up becoming the chief of the base where we were poisoned. What a coincidence. That's how that played out. It was a serious vulnerability. He was placed in charge. I had a laser dot on my back. Even an FBI agent I was working with on this base, good one too, we were doing an investigation. She took me aside, said, close the door. I said, yeah. She goes, uh, you're being set up. And I said, uh, you think so? She goes, oh, yeah. No, you're being set up by your own agency. I just, you know, you're just be, being nice to me, just what she'd seen. And uh, I was. Um, so even the FBI was seeing it. Um, so what was my defining moment? My family was seriously ill from toxic exposure. The, the house is infested with this black mold. We found a, a uh, mustard gas shell percolating up out of the yard. Um, they had broken into the house and painted a chemical on the ceiling. It was like three days of the condor. It was just... Uh, th there was a toxin in there that was a neurotoxin that was deadly. Uh, I documented evidence, doctor's diagnosis. I took my own secret samples of the house, got them processed from an outside entity. I got a full report from that entity saying the house was contaminated. The CIA took control of that document and blacked it out. And, and the, uh, the guy that produced that document, uh, I think it was six months later, was shot in the head. Coincidence? Uh, the cops never solved, solved the case. And they said it was probably unrelated, was the quote. Um, so who knows? Um, who knows? House is broken into. They painted a chemical on the ceiling. We were bugged. We were followed. The security guards who become friends of mine gave me affidavits that they were ordered to destroy any information on the house. They were ordered to destroy the, the, the records of the break into the house and everything else they were ordered to, to destroy by the heads of the base. And they were, they were good folks. They signed those affidavits for our, for our court case. That's one of the ways we got them all the way to court. Then they came to me and they said, uh, you know that settlement that we made with you? We're not going to abide by it. Matter of fact, we're going to give you a fraction of that. And if you don't take that, we're going to invoke the state secrets privilege and we're going to shut down all the information of, of the case and evidence of your family being poisoned. And no one will ever see it again. We got you. That's what they said. Um, <laughs> Like the FBI agent told me the last conversation we had, she said, well, I guess they messed with the wrong man this time. Because I said, oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. I'm, I'll take this. I'm taking this all the way. You know, you want to lock me up? I mean, my, my sweetheart wife back there experienced this. Go ahead. And for a couple of months, I stood there just waiting for them to come. Because I had written a book called From the Company to Shadows, and I put a code in there that exposed that they, the family was poisoned and it was covered up by the state secrets privilege illegally. A gross violation of law and the Constitution. Uh, Congressman Frank Wolf, tremendous guy, uh, tried to get evidence of our case seven times and the agency just blew him off and said, sorry, you got no access to this. You have got no right to even ever access this. Sorry, N it never saw it. A good man, he, he really tried. Uh, so I witnessed at several levels the CIA's unbridled use of secrecy. I mean, you know, I was a decorated officer. I was a loyalist and I started, to, every time I thought they wouldn't do something, they did it. Every time I thought they wouldn't abuse this privilege any further, they did. Uh, to a gross extent, 
to the extent that our agents' lives were at risk in the field. And, and with impunity, they were doing this. So I, I made the decision to fight. And I have to tell you, uh, just me personally, uh, I believe in a higher authority. And, and uh, that's, that's kind of what uh, empowered me to stand. Uh, I'm answerable to a high authority and where my faith is. And uh, I'm not afraid of the CIA. I'm not, you know, they're, my uh, soul is not in their hands. Let's put it that way. And that's, that's what enabled me to have the strength and the courage to, to stand up. And that's why I did. And for the sake of my family, I couldn't let them do that. Just couldn't do it. I, ha I had to keep going. So I wrote a book and they blacked the whole, they, they, it's amazing, they let me publish things, they put me right next to an assassin in the field, uh, a well-known international assassin, they put me right next to him and then left me hanging out in the open without even putting me under any sort of protection, maybe hoping the guy would take me, I don't know, but we went, we went to dinner a lot and the guy started liking me. I, I actually got this in the book and he's, he started, we started becoming friends. So I sent some stuff back to headquarters saying, hey, so-and-so is like, you know, He's here. He's, I'm standing there teaching how to shoot firearms, except for the fact that the guy was so good. I was like, my gosh, you just hit a bottle at 80 yards with a Glock. Who are you? But apparently the guy liked me, so he didn't kill me. And headquarters came back and said, that's an international assassin. What are you doing next to him? I said, you put me next to him, you morons. So you, know, you just drop it anyway. Uh, things like that begin to happen. Um, so, but that I got in the book. The vulnerability to our agents and the ability to find out their identities, I got in the book from the company that shadows, but they blacked out the fact that my family was poisoned. Simple doctor's diagnosis and environmental studies, blacked out. It's a violation of Executive Order 1233, I think it is. Reagan issued it where the CIA cannot black out information if it's simply embarrassing to the agency or reveals illegal activity. They did it with impunity. I think they're going to get away with it. Um, I don't think they did. So I came out in public, and now this is why I do what I do. And since the, I have people coming up to me now, Whistleblowers, I'm friends with William Binney, uh, John Kiriakow, who they put in prison for two years for making a mistake, Kirk Wiebe, whose house is raided by the FBI for the NSA domestic surveillance program. Um, there are heroes out there uh, that believe in the Constitution above their own personal safety. And there, more are coming, God willing. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get even more than that. Why is no one speaking out? If, if we're seeing these things, and I, and I know people who are, why is no one speaking out about these gross violations? Why are there no whistleblowers? This is the, the first reason Dane asked me to come and speak, because this is my, this is my specialty. Uh, why is no one blowing the whistle on these things? I just showed you all the felonies that the federal government, specifically the central node, the CIA is committing. Why is no one being held accountable? Why is no one blowing the whistle? There is a perfected, exact, refined process that the shadow government uses to secretly silence and destroy whistleblowers. And it works really well. I'll show you exactly how they do it. How, how do I know what I'm talking about? Let me just stop here a little bit and, and say this. Um, I have no ego. I'm married. I tried that. My wife will slap me down. <laughs> so uh, I put some things in my book, not to make myself look like a tough guy, but to prove who I was. First thing they tried to do is tell me I could never tell anybody I worked for the CIA until I provided documents where they, they could, just couldn't refute that. Uh, then they, they issued threats about what I could and could not say. Um, so uh, I put some things in my book to prove who I am. And I think that's important because there's a lot of frauds out there and you got to be careful. I was a branch manager in the CIA. I was an internal counterintelligence investigator. I was an internal staff security investigator. I was a polygraph examiner. I engaged and got an award for overseas counterterrorism operations. And I was a program manager in the military industrial complex for a very large defense contractor. That is my background. So uh, I stood against, I guess for a total of 12 years, I stood against the CI and against their abuse of secrecy. And we didn't know, uh, Sue and I didn't know if I was going to be taken away any day. I mean, we lived with that, she and I together, for a good five years. Um, so I put evidence. I actually filed a Freedom of Information Act request to the CI requesting my performance evaluations for my time on the director's staff as his agent, for my time as a counterintelligence investigator, and for my time as a counterterrorism center op operations officer. So after six months of fighting, they're supposed to have it back in 30 days. After six months of fighting, I got it back. I got my actual proof of who I was, and I put it in from the company of shadows. And by the time I got it, there was nothing they could do because they issued it by Freedom of Information. The reason I did that was to prove uh, uh, who I am, or who I was, or who I'm recovering from. <laughs> so no one can come and say that he's just blowing smoke. And I did that because I knew that's exactly what they were going to do. 
Okay, where are the whistleblowers? Remember I mentioned, as we get uh, ready to close, remember I mentioned that the government binds everybody with a secrecy oath, a secrecy agreement. Remember that? I know, because I was one of the guys that executed those uh, four people, on people. Um, in that secrecy agreement, you are bound by ever talking about anything you've ever had access to that's classified, period, anything. You mention that, you leak that, uh, you face administrative action, termination, prison, in some cases, even worse. Do you think anybody's going to take that risk? Uh, your average person? No, most don't. Some, some do. Some go past that. There's a massive complex system of secrecy and concealment. This massive shadow government has got a complex system all arrayed against that one man or woman who has the nerve to come out and expose this uh, dark operation. The whole thing is arrayed against that person. I mentioned uh, when we signed up for the intelligence community uh, with an intelligence job, we waived our right to constitutional trial. We didn't even know it. Nobody knows it. They don't tell us that when we sign up. I know because I tried that personally and they told me, you got no right to trial. That's how I found that out. You have no right to trial. If you, if you are an employee of the CI or NSA, you have waived your right to a constitutional jury trial no matter what happens to you. There is a sequential perfected system to silence and destroy whistleblowers. Now remember, Congress issued the 2012 Whistleblower Protection Act. You remember that? We're going to protect whistleblowers. Remember the old Ron Paul thing? Okay, they're doing reform. Watch them. They issued the 2012 Whistleblower Protection Act. We're going to protect these whistleblowers. So you're protected now, so if you see anything illegal, come talk to us. Only problem, if you read down in the 2012 Whistleblower Protection Act, I mean, it's out there on the net, it says that any employee that has any access to any government classified information at any level is exempt from this act. That's what it says, right in there. So you've got to read down to about the last fourth of the act, and there it is. In other words, you ain't got no protection if you're with the CIA and the NSA. You're, I mean, you're essentially toast. And they prosecuted uh, several people. Kira Cow, they raided uh, uh, William Binney's house, put him at gunpoint, was in the shower. I'll talk about it in a second. Uh, and and just, just grossly abused. There, is no, there was no protection. So Barack Obama in 2014 issued the Whistleblower Enhancement Protection Act because a lot of people staged an outcry over John Kira Cow's arrest and other things. They said, wait a minute, what, this, how can you do this? This is censorship at its worst, government corruption at its worst. So Barack Obama issued the 2014 Whistleblower Enhancement Protection Act. So members of the NSA and CIA are protected now, right? Wrong. What do you think? In the act, it says, an employee of an intelligence agency can only report that illegal activity if they're currently occupying that position in that agency at the time. Just think about that for a second. I'm going to report that the CIA just killed five people in Afghanistan by assassinating them, shooting them in the head. But I can only report that if I'm sitting under the boss in charge of that operation. What do you think is going to happen to me? It ain't going to work. And I'll, that puts the person intentionally under the internal system of personal destruction because they have to be right there where they can get them if they're going to report this stuff. Can you see it? And, and I'll show you how they do that. Sadly, just in this general uh, context here, the news media is compliant. Probably one of the most heartbreaking things is uh, the news media is compliant with this whole system. A uh, whistleblower goes to the, the news media. Most of them are going to let the CIA or the NSA know that they did that. So uh, freedom of the press is uh, no longer. If they've got the guts to proceed over the evidence, then they'll just invoke the state secret privilege and shut the case down and seal it forever. So not even Congress has access. They have that power to do that. I've seen them do it. This is how they do it. They appoint, uh, and this is the system. I want, I want everybody to see the system. I want the system out there in public. So when they pull this, everybody knows what they're doing, what this complex system is, and they can recognize it when it happens. If someone is inside an agency and they see some really black program happen that is illegal and unconstitutional or human rights violation, I want them to know what they're going to try to do to you if you uh, try to report this. And perhaps there's ways you can somehow constitutionally get that to people who need to know. Supervisors who comply are appointed. I was a supervisor, a branch chief. First thing they did was they took me in the office and they said, sit down. We want you to, two of your employees, we want you to rate them down on their performance appraisals because we just want them to know who's in charge and that they need to comply with us. And I said, well, sir, they're both high performers. I couldn't ask for a better employee. They said, no, we're ordering you to do that. And if you don't do that, 
if you don't comply with us, we're going to put a memo in your file that's going to stay with you the rest of your career. You know what they were doing? They were vetting me. What do you think I did? I answered to a higher authority. Uh, I came back the next day and I said, uh, I rated them both high on their performance appraisals. That's what they deserved. They're good employees. I went and I sat down and I said, I rated them what they deserve. You know, make my day. So they put a letter in my file. I said, fine, do what you want to do. A year later, both of those guys are removed from their positions for corruption. But anyway, uh, that's how they do it. Um, the supervisor will take you in, take the employee in and say, you know, Jane or Fred, I know you're concerned about this incident in Syria, but you know, there have been other employees who've kind of reported that same kind of thing and, and uh, well, you saw what happened to them. You know, they lost their career and sadly they were fired and, you know, we don't want that to happen to you, so just be careful. Everybody knows what that means. Do it and you're, and you're gone. If they, if they proceed, they're they start being de denied promotions that they, they are qualified for. They're put away in embarrassing assignments, which is a message to them and all of their coworkers. See what happens if you rock the boat? This is their, this is their method of operation. This is how they do it. Uh, any reporting documents, that, any evidence that they have, remember the assassination vulnerability, is lost or destroyed. Oh, we can't find it. We don't know where that went. Well, it's not on the headquarters server anymore. We don't know what happened. That's what they'll do. Let's say the employee files a grievance, an internal grievance system with the IG, the investigations group that every agency has. Only problem is IG members, at least uh, with intelligence agencies, are career members of that agency. I had someone come out that was a high-level IG member and tell me that when my case hit, they were so freaked out it was going to hit the press and they're going to find out what they were doing. The IG itself tried to silence me. The group that's supposed to, that I filed a grievance with, that was lost from the system, was supposed to assist me, was, became, uh, I was targeted by the very group that was supposed to represent me. That's how they do it. It's part of the system. And the evidence that I had, and I had to go any, any much further on this, I had a full documented report of the poisoning, the doctor's diagnosis, the environmental tests I had. I sent it through official channels to headquarters, called, and they said they never got it. So having the access, I went into headquarters, I went down into the internal cable system, and I talked to Doug, last name not to be known. And I said, Doug, I've, I sent this uh, internal uh, investigation file and they say they haven't received it. You, and this is all through the in, in, internal channels. Very controlled system. Doug went in there. I was sitting right next to him. He goes, uh, I don't believe this. I said, what do you mean you don't believe what? He goes, it's gone. I said, what do you mean it's gone? It's, it's officially tracked document. He goes, no, it's disappeared from the system. He said, I've never seen this before. I said, well, Doug, you, this has never happened. He goes, this doesn't happen. This is an official system. These documents are all tracked. This one is gone. I said, well, can we get it back? And he goes, no, man, it's gone forever. I don't know what the heck happened here. I left there and I'm like, ooh, man, the fun has started. So let's say the employee files a legal suit. Now, this is in chapter 25 of the book, I think, Tyranny of Secrecy. Let's say the employee files a legal suit against the CIA or the NSA. And this is where it gets fun. They let me publish this in the book, too, how they do it. They just wouldn't let me publish who they did it to. This is how they do it. You file a suit against, uh, let's say, the CIA. The CIA will block any outside attorneys and only let you use an attorney approved by them on their list. Kangaroo court already? Maybe? It gets worse than that, man. The, the CIA demands all of the evidence that your attorneys have or you have. They demand you have to provide it to the CIA or you've committed a national security violation. Even, even notes with your attorneys that are taken in their office have got to be turned over to the CIA and controlled in CIA locked safes, then classified by the CIA, even though that it's your evidence and your attorney's notes. That's what they do. Otherwise, you've committed a national security violation. Then they hold and control all documents, everything, control of the case. My attorneys tried to get, they had documents. Uh, they demanded the CIA give them a safe. They were never provided that. So all of my attorney's uh, documents and evidence, the evidence of my report, reports, were forcefully kept uh, in a safe inside CIA headquarters where we never saw them again, never saw the light of day. They classify all unclassified information. The outside environmental report I secretly had done was blacked out. The guy was shot in the head. Who knows where that, I'm not going to go there right now. They took that document classified it, blacked it out, and retained it in, in headquarters so no one could see it. It was now a controlled document. So they classify and classify information. They intentionally dragged the case out for years. They got a staff of 10 CIA attorneys that are getting paid eight hours a day no matter what they do, and you. 
So they can stretch, and they do. They'll stretch that case out for eight to 10 years while you pay your attorney by the hour and drain you financially. About halfway through the process, if you last that long, you're bankrupt. And they know that. Their attorneys get paid a salary every day for four years. They, get, they have nothing to lose, no problem. And if your case is strong and you got them, the judge told my attorneys, uh, I think Mr. Ship has them over a barrel. See, I was them. I caught them with a break-in. I had tapes of them breaking in. I had, I had affidavits from the guards of them destroying documents. Man, I had the whole, I was two steps ahead of them every single time they pulled this because I was trained by them. I was two steps ahead and we had them. We had them. Um, so all they have to do is invoke the state secrets privilege and then they can take all the hard evidence and seal it and it's over. It's gone. Not even congressmen and your senators have access to it. And if you talk about your case, this, the poisoning or anything else, if you talk about your case to anyone, you can go to prison for violating that. Or in my case, my wife and kids, my 70-year-old uh, son could go to prison for talking about the fact that he almost died because he was poisoned. If you can imagine that. Now, kind of a defining moment for a dad, huh? Uh, excuse me, you just, you just don't do that in America, man. You just don't. Uh, they blocked their congressman. They, had threat, they threatened everybody with prison. Most people stop right there. You're drained, destroyed, you're shot. Usually, and they know this, that's, that's how they've developed this system. You're done. You're bankrupt. You're worn out. People get PTSD. They, 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 everything just falls apart. Most people stop right here. If you are an exception to the rule and you keep going, they search your travel records, your credit cards, uh, anything that they can find against you that they can use against you if, if, if they have to go that far. Um, try to find any mistake you've made in your 17, 18, 19, 20 year career. When you travel with the CIA and you're out in some foreign country and you're throwing money around, if they want to find something, they, they'll find it. But that's what they'll do next. Uh, in my case, I was ordered uh, to evacuate, finally evacuate this base. We, 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 uh, they destroyed all of our personal property. Everything in that house, everything we owned was destroyed because it was contaminated. We lost everything, baby pictures included, everything. Kids lost all their toys. Everything was destroyed. That part was blacked out in the book, of course. Um, but that's what they did. And, th and then they ordered me to use the government credit card when we evacuated from the house. So as we're traveling, I get a call from a company called ServPro. I'm not down in ServPro, but this particular office, my wife had some uh, priceless heirlooms from her grandma, a table and a buffet and things that were, that were, uh, uh, they were priceless. They were heirlooms. And those are the one things that we had this decontamination company decontaminating because, you know, they're my wife's heirlooms. So I get a call. They say, you pay us the full amount for this decontamination by tomorrow or we're, gonna, we're putting all your wife's stuff out at the curb and pe people can just take it as they will. I said, well, you've, got, you've got tomorrow by 9 o'clock. So I took the credit card and I charged for the decontamination of the stuff that they contaminated my wife's property. They turned around and said, you've abused the government credit card. We're going to get you on that. And I said, no, back up a little bit. You ordered me for, to use that card for the, for the evacuation. You contaminated this stuff. You want to keep fighting, we'll do this. But that's what they tried to do. It's exactly the same procedure is what they tried on me. It didn't work. Uh, I have seen this happen many times. I was a counterintelligence investigator. We had cases of internal employees. Many of them had not done a thing. They had blown, uh, well, like, th there was some indication where they were reacting some, to some things. And, and I was, one of my strong points was getting them through and finding out it was nothing. But we had some big cases. One of mine went to the president. But... Generally speaking, your average employee are under such stress because they're under investigation in the counterintelligence center. The next step is, well, you know, you're under a lot of stress. You're not sleeping at night. So we recommend you go down to the Office of Medical Services and they'll help you cope with your stress so you can sleep at night. If the employee doesn't know better, they're like, okay. So they march down there and they sit in there with this CIA uh, psychiatrist, many of which were involved in MK Ultra kinds of things. So you're not really dealing with an up above board person and they sit them down and they talk to them about their stress and how to handle it and they're writing down uh, disgruntled paranoid um, insubordination and and then they put that in the file and if it ever does see the light of day if it ever does do it, go to court what do you think they pull out well we did an analysis of Joe Schmo and they're disgruntled they're paranoid I know because I sent some people there and, and now they think they got the documentation unless people know they do this now now people know they do this so if they try to pull it uh, judge, 
or, or, or investigators, now you know you better check and make sure whether this document is legitimate or not. Then what they'll do, I think they did this in, uh, may have done this in uh, Kirk Wiebe's case or, or Thomas Drake, they accuse you of security violations. Uh, you've committed a security violation. They raided Thomas Drake's house because he went and revealed uh, Trailblazer, the NSA domestic surveillance program, nothing classified. Uh, they raided his house. They raided Bill Binney's house. He opened the shower and the FBI had a gun to his head. He committed no crime. So they'll accuse them of a trumped up security violation, which uh, brands them as a security threat. And then they can harass them and surveil them in their own mind. They're, they're now legally can break into their house and surveil them. That's how they do it. That's the system. They've been, they've been utilizing this. There have been thousands of lives that have been destroyed by this system. Thousands of lives. Not just in the CIA and the NSA, but also in the military. Some of you out the military know what I'm talking about because it's happened to you. I've spoken to many of you. Uh, this is the system that they use. It's a refined system of, of entrapment. They do it because it works on most people. What they do strategically then is they begin to destroy the employee financially. If they can't get you, this is how wicked they are. If they can't get you, they'll go for your family. Like the mafia, of course, they've been connected with the mafia. They know those techniques. If they can't get you, they will go to the thing that you love the most, won't they? They'll go to your wife and your kids. They will. And they'll try to destroy you financially. They'll drag you out with, uh, with large legal bills. Um, in my case, they raised all the interest rates on my personal loans within that agency's credit union so they were unaffordable. And when I went in and I demanded to, to see who did it, the uh, head of, the, of this credit union didn't know what they were doing. And he said, my gosh, I've never seen this before. This looks like some kind of retribution. I have him on tape. <laughs> and uh, then they got to him and I called back and he goes, oh, well, I don't know anything about it. I can't talk now. And then the person who wrote the loan disappeared. She doesn't work here anymore. Raised all the interest rates. Then they blocked my retirement funds. I went to OPM and OPM said, well, we've been ordered by your agency not to give you your retirement funds. That's a felony. That is a flat out felony. So I called the OPM and I said, uh, this is so-and-so at the OPM. Do you realize that you're committing a felony by withholding my retirement funds so my family can survive? She's like, I said, no, go, check, go check the regulations. I had my retirement fund in one week. <laughs> I have them on tape, the agency on tape, saying that's why they did it. And this is my evidence building. That's what they'll do. They'll go that far so that your family will not have uh, enough money to survive. They will destroy your family if they have to to shut you up. Again, this is a shadow government. It goes all the way back, blood on the roots, blood on the fruit. They'll drive the employee and their family into financial ruin. Most times the employee is done and they retreat, they're broken, they're sick, they're bankrupt, and it's over for them. And they know that. The psychiatrists know that. They, they're they're well-versed uh, and educated and they've used this multiple times. They know usually it works. The person is broken. Some, I've seen a case like that. This, the, the employee was so devastated, they went out in the woods and killed themselves. And uh, what, what do you have there? Strategy of silence is complete. They've committed the ultimate crime. The person's dead. No more problem for the agency anymore. It's done. Shattered, ruined. Remember this case? They've committed the perfect crime. Remember Gary Webb, who exposed the CIA's drug running down in South America? Gary Webb, uh, they, got, they got to his editors at the press, who fired him from his investigation, ordered him to stop it, put him on, on an embarrassing assignment, uh, I think out in Las Vegas or something like that, and then Gary was found in a hotel room with two bullets in the head. An alleged suicide. I don't know how you shoot yourself twice in the head to kill you, but anyway, uh, no more investigation into CIA drug running in Central America. Gary was dead. And I don't, have you seen the movie on Gary Webb? I recommend you see that, because you will see this entire process followed letter by letter, because it's a perfected system. These three guys, I know them, I know them all. Um, good guys, every single one of them. William Benny, I'd recommend you go to listen to some of his talks about what the NSA is doing today. He was a high level NSA senior manager at the top of the ranks. And he came out and blew the whistle on the NSA domestic surveillance program and Trailblazer, which had lost $7 million at that point. Um, he was taking a shower one night. The shower curtain flew open. There's an FBI SWAT team in his house and he's got a gun at his head. They raided his entire house. Then there is uh, Thomas Drake. Thomas Drake was an NSA whistleblower. He went through the system. He reported it to his managers that this was a problem. This, was, this is surveilling American citizens that lost $7 million. Something needs to be done about it. He went through his supervisors and went through the system. His house was raided by the FBI. He was arrested and charged with espionage. Uh, they fought it in court, and it was, it was uh, uh, 
winnowed down to a misdemeanor charge and, and Thomas Drake is out. But Thomas Drake has, has lost his career now completely. This was the case that Edward Snowden cited when he said, this is why I didn't go through the system. This is why I left the U.S. and reported it to the British newspaper. Because I saw this Snowden saying this. I saw them do this to Thomas Drake and I knew what they were going to do. And you know what? Edward Snowden's right. That's exactly what they would have done or worse. Kirk Wiebe, another friend of mine, exposed the NSA surveillance along with uh, Bill Binney. His house was raided by, the FBI, by an FBI SWAT team. Did nothing wrong, committed no crime whatsoever, nothing. And they raided his house. John Kirikow, spoke with him recently, another friend, a hero, exposed the CIA torture program. And they were just waiting for him because he was going on camera in the news media and talking about the fact that the CIA was torturing people. So they were just waiting. This is why I have to be careful with everything I say. They were just waiting for him to make one mistake. And he gave a card, a business card, to somebody. Turns out the name on that business card was a person who was uh, a, a covert agent at some time in the past. And they nailed him, arrested him, sentenced him to 30 months in jail. And he spent two years in prison. He got out a year ago. You'll see John. You got, go out on the net and watch any of these guys' uh, interviews. I'd encourage you to do it. Uh, these guys are heroes. Uh, and they're, each one of them is one of a kind. And they're some of America's best, in my opinion. Uh, this is the first time tonight, as, as I'm wrapping up, that I have ever told this part of the story, either in the book uh, that I wrote in print or, or in an interview. Uh, because I, I want uh, people to understand that there's a personal side to these things. Uh, when you're going through this kind of uh, tyranny, um, no, you're not a superman or super person or super woman. Uh, I mean, they put you through a torturous set of circumstances and events. They're trying to destroy you and your family. Uh, they, they raised the interest rates on my loans, they blocked my retirement funds, forced our house into foreclosure because we had no money to pay the mortgage. That'll get you. They blocked my employment with any contractors related to the CIA. I had friends, supervisors, uh, that knew of my awards and medals and they were ordered not to hire me and they, when they were trying to get me into work for them. They blackballed my employment with these guys trying to destroy me financially. This is what happened to me personally. I continued to stand by faith, frankly. Uh, we had huge legal expenses, extensive medical bills from the family's illnesses, um, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of medical bills. We lost everything we owned. All of our material possessions were in the house that was contaminated, and it was all destroyed, taken away, and burned. And we, we literally came back to Washington with nothing but the shirt on our back. Uh, I went to several meetings. I had a 15-page detailed report with evidence, doctor's diagnosis, environmental studies, the whole shebang that was lost several times. And then they found it one day from, from the lithosphere and brought me in for an interrogation. Now, interrogating a former interrogator, that's always interesting. And spent uh, several hours trying to get me to recant the evidence that I had in my memo or else. And uh, I refused. At that point, you know, I pretty much... I was kind of like the lamb at a gyro feast. You're committed, <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I, I wasn't, wasn't going to stop. So I said respectfully, uh, no, no, that's evidence uh, in this case, and uh, uh, you're going to keep it in there. So I was taken to uh, a meeting with my attorney inside the Office of General Counsel, where I demanded to see this grievance that I had written in the evidence, and they claimed, uh, well, we don't have it. What do you mean you don't have it? We lost it, they said. Uh, my Two attorneys had never seen the beast before. They're, they're sitting there with their eyes all wide. And I said, you, you go get that or I'm coming in your office and I'm going to find it for you. So they come back in and they present me a one-page uh, document written, handwritten in blue ink claiming to be my grievance, which is a 15-page type document that I had written. And at that point, I said, it's over. We're leaving. Went back to my office. I was met with three CI officers who tried, tried to get me to sign a statement saying I'd engaged in insubordination. And I respectfully refused and said... Uh, uh, this, this battle is just beginning, you guys. Um, like the FBI said, you messed with, with the wrong person. I took them to court after that. Uh, there was another house break-in, and it just kept going. Um, then they issued the threat of, well, we've got you mis misusing a government credit card for paying for the decontamination of the stuff that we poisoned and contaminated. And I said, nice try, but, you know, make my day. I lost my career. I lost all of my retirement completely. My job outside was blocked at this phase, because I hadn't stopped. I hadn't given up yet. I was, I was going. I was still going. All the evidence was sealed, so no one could see it, not even my congressman. I was threatened with prison. If I talked about my case or the poisonings to anyone under the state secret privilege, I was going to jail. 
My wife will tell you for several years, we waited for that event every single night, not knowing if it was going to happen or not. I was, I was ready. I was ready to go, ready and willing. Um, I mean, this is the Constitution we're talking about. This is my country. This is my democracy we're talking about. I don't care what you do. You're not getting away with this. Lost my family. My wife could not recover. She was very sick neurologically. She couldn't get out of bed. She was bleeding through her gums, bruising all over. Uh, could you imagine being the wife and having a, a powerful agency like this break into your house, uh, poison your children, paint chemicals on the ceiling, and then tell you you're going to prison if you talk about it to anyone? Ruined our marriage. I mean, bless her heart. No woman should have to go through that. Uh, uh, but that happened. Couldn't take it anymore. My children were having nightmares for years after this. Nice people, aren't they? at these levels. No, they're, they're wicked. Uh, I had co-workers cheering me on. Oh, man, everybody in there hates them. <laughs> I mean, we call it the paranoia palace. They're telling me, man, go get him, Kevin. We're with you. We're with you. But when I came out and stood, crickets, they all disappeared back in the woodwork to the land of the cowardly. And I understood, okay, I, I understand, you know, uh, doing this sort of thing is rare. Um, I wrote my book, they blacked out everything relating to the illnesses and the poisonings, but they left the vulnerability to our agents and the other stuff that I never thought I'd get through, they, they left, left it in there. I think they, they wanted, they were making kind of a deal, we'll let you publish this stuff, but don't ever talk about this, ever. And we, we still kind of have this, I, I have a lot of uh, programs I worked on and uh, in a lot of different parts of the shadow government, and I, I'm not talking about that, I'm an honorable man, there's no reason for me ever to talk about it in my lifespan, but we have kind of an agreement going. <laughs> I'll get up and talk about this stuff, and we'll just leave that other stuff aside, and we've got kind of a mutual agreement here, just, you know, don't go there. Um, blacked out those parts in the book, and uh, they thought they had finished me off. The only thing that kept me going, frankly, was my faith and my belief in freedom, that this, com this country should be a free country, and there should no agency, no shadow government should have this kind of power in a constitutional government. I can't tell, that's what drove me, is, is the outrage and the tyranny of this. It just, it's got to be stopped. So, uh, they were wrong. They hadn't finished me off. Uh, I answered to a high authority, and that, that's always their worst nightmare, I think. I wound up in Jacksonville, Florida, with absolutely nothing, everything. Everything I'd loved had been take, taken away from me. Uh, book had been blacked out, the first one, completely blacked out. I sat down in Jacksonville just, just, uh, just with nothing left. Um, then I met an angel. Uh, I, uh, I met a woman named Sue who uh, helped me through a lot of this. Um, when I was outraged by what had been done, uh, she listened to my stories. Uh, gave me a, a, an ear about the betrayal that I had just suffered. Um, when uh, people were parked outside our house, she was there standing strong uh, with me. When I had third parties logging onto my computer, when I was writing the book, she stood by me then. Uh, when I wrote From the Company of Shadows and built the code into the book about what they had done and what they'd covered up, there's a code in there that unlocks the blackouts. She stood with me there. Uh, days I drank too much, she was there patiently with me, just helping me through it. Uh, days when we thought for four years that I was going to be arrested any night, she stayed with me through the whole time. And uh, that's my wife Sue in the back. So uh, there are angels out there. Thank God for them, if you just don't give up. Uh, this is a segment from the book From the Company of Shadows. Now what I did was I built codes all through the book, and they missed them all. This is one of them. This is a picture. This is what the book Blackouts, Identities, and Case Facts are Hidden in Secret. That's the actual text. There is nothing classified here. It, it, is, it is a term, a family term. Let's just put it that way. There's nothing classified at all. Blackouts, Identities, and Case Facts are Hidden in Secret. They don't want anybody to know that the shadow government does and has hurt families. Because that's basically all they're saying there is families. I won't say the exact words, but to the effect of families. Uh, this is the actual shadow of the young 17-year-old man that was poisoned so bad the doctor said it looked like he'd been exposed to a burst of radiation. And the agency blacked that out in the book, that doctor's diagnosis. This is his actual shadow. And as you can tell, all these themes blend into the, into the, the uh, uh, title of the book. The title usually comes after the book is written, and that's how, that's how this happened. That's the actual shadow. So I built a code into the, in front, from the Company of Shadows. I decided, not my constitution, you don't. 
Uh, go ahead, make my day. We'll just take this all the way and see how far you're going to go with this. So I built a code into the book that reveals who this person is and reveals how they were poisoned, who was poisoned, and how it was done. And it's a numerical code that's woven through the text. Uh, it's in the back of the book. They know I did it. It's gone to the, I, there was a press release. It went to the desk of the director. They know full well that I put a code in that book. They also know that what they blacked out was illegal. So we have kind of a mutual agreement here. And I put it in front of the Company of Shadows. This is one of the chapters about the, to the poisonings and the doctor's diagnosis and the report. Um, issued a report. Uh, they blacked out what the report was by an outside, the guy that was shot. Uh, they blacked out that. They blacked out his report. They blacked out the results of his report of the, the toxic exposure. But that's one of the actual chapters in the book. This, it, these are accounts of the break into our house the chemicals that were painted on the ceiling, the fact that we were followed and, and the guards attested to that fact, the doctor's diagnosis and evidence records, that's what this is, blacked out. Nothing classified, nothing is a source and method, everything reveals illegal activity and a gross cover-up, all of it. It's a dirty job, as they say, somebody's got to do it. So, in closing, there's got to be CIA reform, it is a must. As I, humbly as I know it, I may be the first CIA officer. They call you a CIA agent, but that's a, a misnomer. You're, you're a CIA officer. You're kind of an officer similar to the military grade. You're a CIA officer. If you're a CIA agent, you're, you, you've been recruited by the CIA to spy against your government. So CIA agent is a misnomer. CIA officer is someone who's reached those ranks. Anyway, um, there, intelligence analysis is necessary. Truman's original goal of an, of an intelligence analysis outfit that provides objective intelligence to the president to make decisions is a good thing. That was, the, that was Truman's original intent. Yes, we need something like that. Something like that should be uh, developed again. The National Security Act of 1947 needs to be rescinded. That gives the CIA the power to conduct undefined covert operations needs to be rescinded. That power needs to be taken away from the CIA now. There's been too many gross violations, too much abuse of secrecy, too much control of the U.S. government for this to continue any longer. And I think, the, and it's, this is starting, the public is starting to demand that the CIA be dismantled, the National Security Act be rescinded, and, and an actual intelligence agency be recreated in, in uh, the form that it was originally intended. Dissolve all CIA covert action. Every single one, the majority ones, have been an abject failure and backfired and caused national security to be hurt worse than if that operation would, has never been done before. That's what corruption and secrecy will do. It will backfire every time and it will wind up coming back and hurting national security, not helping it. Restructure the U.S. intelligence apparatus and take away its power of secrecy. Restructure it so that it has congressional approval and that monster is put back underneath the Constitution. If we want to survive as a constitutional republic, if we want to survive, that's got to happen. If it doesn't happen, it's over for us. Full disclosure to the American people of what this is doing. Full disclosure of the tax revenue budget because it's coming out of our pockets. If you're going to use tax money, at least through our congressmen that we've elected, we need to know where that tax money is going. We need to know exactly, shadow government, what you're spending this money on because it's the American people's money and it's our tax dollars and we demand that you tell us what you're spending it on. No more secret budgets. No more corruption with our tax dollars. An impartial committee to monitor the use of government secrecy. We need a government secrecy oversight committee staffed by, people elect, staffed by officials elected by the American people. No more abuse of government secrecy. It is the new tyrannical power. It's the new tyranny of our age is secrecy. And there needs to be a council appointed by the people that oversees the, the use or abuse of government secrecy. Puts that back under the Constitution. Remember that the shadow government hates the light. Just like cockroaches, the shadow government hates exposure. That's why we got this Donald Trump thunderstorm thing going on. The shadow government, like a cockroach, hates light. What does it say? Uh, sunlight is the best antiseptic. Shadow government hates being exposed. It'll do anything to stop it. And I mean anything. In my case, they almost did anything to stop it. There needs to be a grassroots civil movement across the America. We need to establish thousands of groups united around the Constitution. Constitution groups that are both Democratic and Republican coming together under the Constitution and stopping this monster. 
If you love your country, you're a Democrat or Republican or Independent, you need to come together under the Constitution and stop this because your country is going and it's going fast. That's what's at stake. We need to cause a social media storm. We need to get impartial uh, news and information groups out there with credible journalists that are publishing this stuff over the internet to the American people and beyond with credible, accurate information that's going around the bought and paid for news media so that people are informed, cause a social media storm. We have that, at least for now. Get this out there. Educate people as, as to what's going on. And when people get, it takes one person to lead a movement and then other people, one, two, three, four, five people, then other people will follow. Somebody's just got to take the first step. Um, and then you get out on the social media, you start accurately, incredibly putting this stuff out, you cause a social media storm. Fire them all. Congressmen and senators who are now statesmen and are no longer following the Constitution, who are lying to us, spending our money on things we have not authorized them to do, and are not fulfilling their constitutional responsibility, the Congress and the Senate fire them all and elect new people, congressmen and senators, that are constitutionalists at every level, federal and state, but specifically federal. It's time uh, to do some house cleaning. It's past time. Demand total intelligence agency reform. Demand it and do not let that go. Demand it. We the people are still here, at least physically. <laughs> so demand it. We have to demand it. We have to push it. We must never forget this is government by the people. Remember that thing called the Constitution? This is governed by the people. It's not the other way around. Although they forced it into being that way, it's not the other way around. The Congress and Senate are your representatives. They work for you. They serve you. Now, that's not what they're doing. But constitutionally, that's what they're supposed to do under the law, under constitutional law. Constitutional government serves the people. We don't serve the government. It's not our master. The government is our master. That's the, the founding fathers were brilliant. They were studies of history. They knew that's the only way it was going to work. It was a brilliant, brilliant piece of work. But they, they, they did a lot of study of history and past governments before they wrote the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. There's a lot of study went behind that. Government violation of the Constitution are what? Felonies. Okay? Our government, the shadow government, has committed multiple felonies. You have to remember that. They've broken the law at the highest levels. They're doing this uh, secretly using our tax dollars. They're picking this money out of our back pocket to do these things without our knowledge. And the weapon of tyranny is always fear from communism to fascism all the way down to the tyranny of secrecy. The weapon of the shadow government is fear. They want us to fear them. They want us to fear what they can do to us if we talk about them. They want us to fear um, what they can do to us if we try to stand up and expose what they're doing. They want us to just leave them alone, be afraid of them. You talk to anybody on the street, I really don't want to know what the CIA is doing. You know, just let them do what they want to do. I, I just don't want to go there. Exactly. The weapon of tyranny is fear. All down through history, that's always been the case. So do not fear the shadow government. Once you fear, whatever that entity is, controls you. If you don't fear, you're free. Uh, I, I always like to wrap my uh, talks up with this famous quote attributed to Thomas Jefferson because it's so true. When people fear their government, there is tyranny. But the reverse is true. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. They need to fear us. They need to see us getting up at times like this and saying, oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. We the people are not going to put up with this. And guess what? Now we have the guts and we have the courage to stand up against you because we don't fear you anymore. Then they got a problem. All the way down through history, movements have started just like this when people stop fearing tyranny and their government. So that, that's all I have for tonight. Thanks for being patient. Please remember this. Uh, this is going to be uh, in two parts available on fortheloveoffreedom.net, I think is the website that we're putting up. Uh, take this message, please, and, and, and just spread it around and stand. Stand up with me and the rest of us that are doing this humbly before the Constitution. Stand up and together as the American people, we can do it. So anyway, thank, thanks you all. Thanks for coming. <laughs>